Yeah. Good evening and welcome to the February 11th meeting of the Town of Wareham Board of Selectmen and Sewer Commissioners. May we have the roll call, please? Hold on. Present is Selectman Whiteside, Selectman Tropiano, Selectman Holmes, Selectman Slavin, Selectman Teitelbaum, Town Administrator Derek Sullivan, and Town Council Richard Bowen. Next item, please. Announcements, Mrs. Whiteside. Thank you. The only announcement I have is that the um, Town of Wareham Committee Member Handbook is online um, and is available to any people who are currently serving on committees or anybody who's going to <coughs> run for um, a job. It is something that um, refers to a fair amount of information that if you are serving on a board or commission, you should know, um, including the ethics law. And thanks to everybody who helped me put it together. That's it. Mr. Tropiano. Uh, I don't have, I don't have uh, much, but uh, I just want to thank everybody for, for uh, understanding while I wasn't here last week because of my birthday. Uh, I have, I, I'm, I'm 15 for the fourth time. <laughs> yeah, that, that's right. Don't add that up. <laughs> <laughs> you, you get the calculator. <laughs> I don't think the numbers go that high. <laughs> Mr. Holmes. Well, that was it. That's it, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I've, uh, over the week, um, some notice, I may have a haircut here. Thanks to uh, Mr. Harry down at uh, Gone Hollywood on Main Street. A great place to get a haircut. I uh, picked up some, we're doing some cleaning up around the house. I went out and got some boxes, cardboard boxes and tape over at the uh, storage place out by Cumberland's. Uh, Friday, Saturday night, we had some outstanding fish. Uh, with a little Portuguese flavor to it uh, from uh, Barnacle Bills over on uh, Route 6 there. Uh, outstanding cuisine. And you know, and I talked to him for a few minutes because I know the young man from New Bedford. I was actually burnt a lot of brain cells with his grandfather. Um, <coughs> and he's doing really good. Uh, he's looking forward to the warm weather, but uh, so if we can get out and support those businesses who stay open all winter, uh, that would be great. Also, a, uh, I better buy some washes from the hardware store in Onset. So I was quite busy over the last week. Um, <coughs> in terms of other announcements, though, I think um, to those who have been uh, emailing and calling, uh, keep them coming, you know. Uh, we. Uh, we're looking for any and all ideas uh, relating to money and uh, how we can uh, chop some of those dollars uh, and make dollars as well. And I'll bring this up again uh, under the uh, going forward, but I was reminded today uh, by a special email that any group who plans to uh, have an event down in August, in uh, August, in onset. Uh, we own the parking lot, so please don't write on your application that you want to use those parking lots because uh, Mr. Sullivan will have a plan in place so that we can collect that money this summer for the town. Uh, not trying to be mean to groups, but when we can't have a trash bin or we can't have a policeman or we can't uh, have uh, things to build infrastructure to grow those events, uh, we can't be giving away um, parking money. So it's not to be mean, it's actually to help grow the event business in our town. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. First up, we have the Sweetheart Dinner Fundraiser, Monday, February 17th. Snow date is February 24th, Old Methodist Meeting House, 495 Main Street, Wareham. This is a Wareham Historical Society event. Open to the public. There's at 5 to 9 p.m. There's a silent auction. 
6 p.m. there's a potluck dinner. 6.30 is a trivia program hosted by Skip Barlow and Pauline Sampson from the Bourne Historical Society. Warham Historical Society cordially invites you to a potluck dinner prepared by our very own chefs on the Warham Historical Society board. For better or worse, that includes me also cooking food. Uh, Wareham Coffee Hour with Mr. White over at the library now. Remember, it's at the library, 9.15 this Thursday. Uh, the guest is Mr. Liam McKenna, uh, the report, one of the reporters for Wareham Week. Uh, I'll make this as an announcement. Uh, planning Board, uh, Walmart, the parcel in front of Walmart, which is owned by the Robinsons. Uh, there was, was an initial site plan review document submitted showing two restaurants, a retail store, and one lot being held for later on. So this will be coming up uh, in the near future about continuing development in that area. And uh, to Mr. Holmes's point, my wife and I, Sandy, did stop Saturday at, for dinner at uh, Barnacle Bill's and uh, it was quiet there. It's kind of a shame because it's, the food is extremely good. I do enjoy eating, as you can all see by my size, and uh, it's a place that should be basically as long as it's under fifty dollars, which it always is, yeah, it is. So it is. It is a really good place. People should try it. Thank you. Just have a few things. Uh, first off, uh, I've been informed by Bob Brady, the president of the Wareham Village Association, that they are looking to uh, have the first oyster festival uh, in the town of Wareham. Uh, it's uh, currently planned to take place the week of uh, April 20th uh, through the 27th. During the week, apparently, they're going to have uh, oyster dishes at various restaurants around town, sponsor uh, dining out activities. Uh, on the weekend, there's going to be a road race. Uh, they're looking to uh, use the downtown area, much as we have for the Swan Festival, I think, uh, to, to have events and things going on down there. So this is a uh, an interesting new thing that uh, the Warrior Village Association is coming forward with. They'll certainly be coming to us for permits and so on and so forth, so we'll, we'll hear more about it in the coming weeks. Uh, I, I don't know if this really belongs as an announcement, but I'll do it here anyway. Uh, on Thursday, Selectman Slavin and I went up uh, with the library director and several of the uh, library trustees to appear at a hearing uh, on the town's application uh, to be granted a waiver for what's called the MIR, which is the Municipal Appropriation Requirement for the library. Uh, the state, through the library commissioners, sets a, a level. It's, a, it's an averaging, looking back over the past few years, that they want you to hit uh, when you fund your library. This past year, of course, as people will recall, uh, the library, uh, we didn't have enough in the municipal budget to really cover the, the expenses as we had in the past. So there were some private sources applied, notwithstanding that the private sources allowed the library to mostly operate as it typically does. Uh, we didn't meet our percentage for the municipal appropriation requirement. So we went up in support of the library's director's uh, request for a waiver of that. Uh, we won't hear from them until March. Uh, they took it under advisement. They will vote at their meeting in March whether to grant the waiver or not. Uh, I can tell you that they are certainly looking next year for the budget to be funded as it has been in the past. Certainly neither Selectman Slavin or I were able to, to even remotely commit to any numbers, uh, not knowing what the budgeted amount is going to be, not knowing where we're going to be financially. I don't know that they were happy to, no, to uh, not know how we were going to be going forward, but I think they at least were uh, respectful of the fact that we were candid with them. Uh, one of the questions that was brought up and this is a question that we had a citizen come before us several weeks back on, was whether uh, the library could be open at night. Uh, one of the library commissioners in particular was concerned that we don't have hours open until 7 or 8 o'clock at night. Uh, I would ask Mr. Sullivan uh, perhaps to look into that question again. I believe he did previously, but perhaps we could look into it again and see if there's a possibility of getting the library open one day a week till 7 or 8 o'clock at night. Traditionally, in most towns, libraries have one night a week when they're open fairly late. I can recall as a kid, my mother used to drive me up, I think it was Thursday nights, to the old uh, Toby Library on the corner of uh, High Street and Center Street uh, to go get books on Thursday so I could have books to read over the weekend. So it would be nice if we could get back to that again. And I think that's all I have. 
One other point, sorry I missed out. The planning board will be holding a public workshop for the TDR. It will be February 20th, 7 p.m. at the cafeteria. There'll be a presentation of what we call a draft. It's not a finished document. There'll be a map showing the receiving and sending areas. They'll be easy enough to read, plus handouts showing the map as well, and there'll be copies of the TDR. The TDR also should be posted on the town website probably by before the end of this week. We can download that as well. Thank you very much. Okay, next item, please. Let's not skip over it. Citizens' participation. Is there anybody who'd like to come forward and speak to the board? Uh, seeing none, next item, please. Oh, we do? Come on up. <laughs> Angela Dunham, I'm speaking on behalf of the Wareham Summer of Celebration. Um, I had a meeting this past um, Monday. Yesterday. Monday. Monday. Uh, to present information having to do with the Wareham Summer of Celebration historical exhibit um, project that I'm coordinating. This project is going to take place this coming July, uh, Tuesday, July 8th, Wednesday, July 9th, and Thursday, July 10th, which is actually the town's 275th incorporation um, commemoration. I would appreciate if anyone has any intentions of reserving a table for that historic exhibit, it's going to be held um, in the Wareham Town Hall Auditorium all three days. The tentative hours at this time, we're projecting it to be from noon to seven o'clock at night to give people a chance to come in um, after work if they so choose. It ha will have uh, no charge to participate, no charge for admission. Family friendly, it'll be set up like uh, a trade show or eighth grade science fair where people will come in and have a table with timeline ha handouts, um, artifacts on display, and photographs. I have had um, many people come forward and ask to reserve tables. However, the space will be limited, so if anyone is interested in reserving a table, um, you need to get back to me. Um, you can either reach me through my email, ron, R-O-N, to Angela Dunham at verizon.net, or call me, please, at 295-508. 295-8578. Please reserve your table so that we can have a space for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next item is consent agenda. We don't have anything. We have no license and permits. Next up will be Mr. Campiner. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board, and uh, Mr. Town Administrator. Uh, the first request is for a sewer connection at um, 3 Tyler Avenue. I believe you have it in your packet. The Abbey Glass Complex um, on Tyler Avenue, the Tyler Avenue Extension, which is in between the 6 and 28 area there, um, is asking to connect to the town sewer. There was a stub left off of Cranberry Highway for that portion of, um, of Tyler Avenue. And so they've presented a plan. They're going to use a low pressure system, uh, some existing septic tanks, add some pumps in it, go along the highway, along, I'm sorry, along, um, uh, Tyler Avenue and then they're going to put a manhole on the stub that was left from Cranberry Highway onto Tyler Avenue and they're going to connect into that stub there with the manhole and the manhole is for future there's one more apostle there that if they someday decide to tie in they can tie into that manhole um, I've sat with um, Dave Menard and there's some conditions we put in there which would be paving and um, making sure that the drainage is still in place. There's one drainage cover that's leaning to put that back to where it belongs and those type of conditions are in there. 
So um, I, we were pretty, in talking today, we're pretty satisfied that uh, that will meet the requirements of the town. And uh, so what I'm asking the board is that uh, they be given permission to tie into the sewer. Questions? This, please. There is no easement. That's on the next one. Oh, okay. I, I just saw this. Uh, so the this easement is, is for 3 O Glen Charlie Road. This is 3 Tyler Avenue. Let me just see what it says here. Let's see. Uh, Second uh, sewer uh, force main. D4. Okay, 3 O Glen Charlie Road. Okay. Yes, that's the easement. Yes. Right. That's next up on the agenda. So this is just straight where there was a stub left and they're going down and use the stub that's there basically. Yes. It's to, okay. and they're using low pressure because yep, that's to fine. do gravity would be that's difficult. Fine. So Any other questions? Nope. Your motion, please. Motion to approve the connection for three Tyler. Subject to the conditions, conditions outlined conditions by the director. Yes. Motion made by Selectman Slavin, seconded by Selectman Holmes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstained, 500. Thank you. And the next one is the um, 3 Old Glen Charlie Road with the easement included. And the easement is here. And the easement has taken some time. Uh, the lawyers have um, sat down and, uh, and vetted this easement. And it is in its final um, state for you folks to look at. Um, what, Glen what they're trying to do at Old Glen Charlie Road, I don't know if you have the plans. And originally you were given the big, big plans. I think they came in front of us a few months ago and we got a big complete set of plans. So I don't know if you still have those, but we included a small set of plans in this so you can have some reference. Um, and so what, there's a apartment complex there, uh, two apartments and they're in failed, the sewers and failed septic systems, a failed septic system. And it's actually in, partially in the wetland. So what the owners ask is that he be allowed to tie to the sewer. And so what that will entail is coming off his property through the town property, which requires an easement. That's where the easement comes in. Mm -hmm. And then come to Route 6 and 28, bore underneath 6 and 28, and then come up on the sidewalk alongside Cumberland Farms. And there's a stub that was put in the manhole in the middle of 6 and 28 that comes to Cumberland Farms that would at one time was going to be used by Cumberland Farms, but Cumberland Farms decided to go out the back and around, so that stub's available. So they'd like to utilize that and tie into that. So they're going to have a manhole on their side of the highway, manhole on the, in, the, in the parking, I mean, in the, in the sidewalk on the Cumberland Farms portion of the highway, and then they'll connect to the pipe that comes from the manhole uh, that ties into Depot Street uh, on, right on the, where the Cumberland Farms sign is, right in that area there. Um, the, the homeowner is responsible for everything. The town has no liability or cost in this project. The homeowner is to absorb every single cost that's associated with this, this job. He's gotten quotes from thirty, fifty, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 to complete this. That's on him, certainly not the town. We've got a permit from Department of Transportation to go under the highway. And again, the Department of Transportation makes it quite clear that the town of Warham is responsible. And so we're telling the homeowner he's responsible. He assumes our liability for this. Uh, op road opener permits have to be issued to the town. We do it all the time. The town gets them. So we're going to hold him responsible for everything that's in here. So I just wanted to be aware of that. We have the permit in place. It's been approved by the Department of Transportation. They've approved his plan, so what he's going to do. And so we're asking that he be allowed to tie in. I have one one issue with this, yep. and my issue is that that's a piece of town-owned property. Yep. Yes. And if you look at the property, what's its its best use would be what I'd consider is the value to the town. And once you put an easement on it, of course, you limit its best use, whatever its best use is. It's this one right here. See it right here? This corner piece right here, Cranberry Highway and Old Glen Charlie. See the easement of these lines coming across. There's a couple of pictures to show you what that property is. Yeah, it's it's just some it's right wood. Now. It's wooded land, and it, um, it it's not buildable. Um, we couldn't well, build whoa, on that whoa, possible. Whoa, whoa. It's town-owned property, yeah, I know, so I know you that. can't just, say it's not buildable because the town owns it. Oh, the town can build. Okay, the I thought town the town could, for, the town could decide to put something up there and put it up. I mean, you know, we no, could, I meant by zoning. I we could make things town happen. Could, you know yeah, what okay. I'm saying I, for I, the town? I apologize. It's town-owned property, and what its best use is. It matters to me because I don't want to devalue the town's property by putting an easement across it that all of a sudden I can't use this property. And I don't know what that is. 
somebody needs to give us some input into what this property is worth just as far as its value. I, well, just going forward, this was voted at town meeting, essentially instructing us to do this. Uh, to gr town meeting authorized us to negotiate the easement. So all we're doing here is affecting the will of town meeting, which in April, uh, I know this board didn't recommend the passage of the article at the time, but they, nonetheless, they did pass it. Uh, and they told us to go forward and uh, convey this easement to these people and to negotiate the easement. So if you have an issue with how the easement w was negotiated, uh, that's fine. But to say that, you know, we're somehow authorized to say no to the easement, I, they've already cleared the field in that regard. And, you know, they've, they've bound us here. Well, uh, so town meeting has authorized the easement? They, can't, they have no right to authorize an easement. They authorize the expenditure of money, not easements. List Town Council. Council's right. Yes, why don't yeah, you come on up. I, I want to get a little, I just need a little more. I got to clarify this because this is important as far as what the town's value to the land is. Can you Mr. help Chairman. us a little with this, sir? Um, the article went on at the request of Mr. Christofferson, I believe it was a citizen's petitioned article. Uh, town meeting voted in favor of it, and the effect of town meeting's vote was to authorize the Board of Selectmen, but not require, to grant the easement that Mr. Christofferson sought on such conditions as the Board of Selectmen may choose to impose. So uh, we're at the point now where we have easement language uh, there's an engineered plan, and this is the point at which you could decide what conditions could be imposed. Okay. All right. Sure. Um, the, uh, it was a petitioned article. The town meeting voted in favor of the petitioned article. The legal effect of the petitioned article is to authorize the Board of Selectmen to dispose of the particular easement that's shown on the plan on such terms and conditions as you deem appropriate. But no, there's no man. No, town meeting, town meeting cannot make you exactly. do this. Yeah, you're, you're Mike. So. Uh, yeah, thank you. I'm sorry. So, so in fact, what Mr. Pat Trappier was saying is true. They can't make the board issue this easement. They only authorize the board of selectmen to do it if they so choose. That's correct. Thank you. Yeah, see, I, I, uh, I, like the, I can't see by this picture. Have you ever been a picture? No, if you go to Cumberland Farm, look across the street. I, it's been I, come up the Yeah, come up to the lights and yeah. take a left, and on your right is, is where this land is. It's, I don't know, if you, if you come down, come from Onset. Old Glen Charlie Glen Char Road. Old road up there. That's right. And if you take the first way to go on the old Glen Charlie Road, to your right is that strip of land that this. The music that, store was on the corner there. Yes, on the corner is the music store and then JC Engineering. Well, if you come across, if you look at Common Farms, that piece of property is right there. It's right. That's where it is. Yeah. Yes. Yes, if you look at Old Glen Charlie on this planet, well, Old Glen Charlie Road, and then you see that strip of land there, here. and then you can see the, uh, yeah. absolutely. It might even say right there. Does it say right there? No, it's way, it's, 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 it's over here, I think. Oh, okay, yes, Old Glen Charlie Road. If you want to get an aerial of it, uh, Mr. Sullivan's popped up Google Earth. Oh, okay, that'd be great. To take a look at. That'd be really helpful, actually. I want to see where it okay, so, the so this is the parcel we're talking about, right? So that's up to this water area here, right? The pond, yes. Yep. <laughs> speak it, yeah. Speak right into the microphone, guys, if you would, please. What, this is the extent of, I'm assuming this is the extent of this guy's property. What's this? Yeah, so I don't know where our property line is. 
53 feet. If you look on the map, it shows you about 53 feet to the property line to the uh, to Route 6. Big to say that, see, there's the corner, right? Which is right here. Yep. All right, so if you look at these numbers, what's that say? 50, can you read that? I can't read that. 83? 53. 53. 53 feet 53. from his property so lot. It's 100 and some odd feet from here to here. So I would guess that that's an encroachment right now on the property, wouldn't you say? I would say. <laughs> well, if you go 100 feet and then draw a straight line through here. Which is basically what it is. You go 100 feet down here and then draw a straight line. I mean, that's it's quite evident, but that's. What is the uh, depth at which this would be installed? Uh, the depth would be four, four and a half feet. It's a pressure line, so it'd be just below the frost line. Right. Meaning, is the meaning it doesn't? It's not gravity fed. It's pressurized. Is the property vacant now? Yes. And has been. The property that we're in question the town owns, but no, no, the the property that wants the tie-in. No, it's 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 uh, occupied. It's a it's a two-family with a, a failed septic system. Oh, this is really great. Hold on one second, okay? We're, we're just sorry that this is. I noticed too that there is uh, uh, in the draft so easement language uh, it talks about a two-inch force main. Yes. What yeah, see, yeah, quantity? Yeah of uh, See, dwelling way. units he's, he's could be attached to a two-inch force main. In other words, could somebody come in here with a 40B plan and use that to uh, put up 40 units? No. No. What is the limit that you would say could be supported by a two-inch force main? That's a good question. I would say he could expand probably to four apartment buildings maybe. You so know, to four units? It's four units with ease. Okay. Um, Can not I being an engineer, not speaking for an engineer. If we were going to put a development, we'd, we'd make them put a four-inch line. Right. What we'd require. I have a question. Yes. yes. I'm sorry. If it's a failed septic system and it's a rental property, why is it occupied? Because it, it is. I mean, the other option is to throw the tenants out because there's a failed septic system. Septic system failed, and he has two years to replace, replace the septic system, which would require, because of the location, would be quite costly, just like this is. But the problem with that is he, it would take a lot. He, the land is limited. He'd have to raise everything up because the water table is quite high. Just right, so but he, didn't the board to your, of to your, to your question, uh, just because the system has failed under Title V does not mean the property is immediately uh, condemned no. or shut down. There's a, there's a lengthy appeals period. There's a lengthy time period by which you have to replace that septic system. Two years. They understand that people don't have 20 grand kicking around to just pop out and, and fix the problem. I understand that, but didn't the Board of Health recently pass a permitting process for um, rental properties where all where you pay a hundred dollar fee and right but that's inspection of the premises and that's and not title that five inspections Absolutely. that's that's totally different All well right, no so it's not because it has to have water it has to have trash it has well, to it, have yeah it has to have those things but they're, they're it, they don't supersede the title five regulations that allow people to remain until Rip patrick can speak to this pretty thoroughly i think uh, well uh, hypothetically you uh, they can give you a certain amount of time Two in order to repair your system and it can be up to two years, yes. uh, unless it's a health hazard for some reason. There's actually affluent flowing down the street, then uh, that's a different story. But uh, they can give you up to two years actually to have to repair or replace it. Uh, right. Plenty of people buy properties, yeah. believe it or not, with failed systems, and they have two years to replace them. Yes. Yep. So that's just Title V. And through you, Mr. Chairman, if it was running down the road, then he'd be required to pump that daily yeah, to mitigate whatever it was for public safety and public health. That's so right. So he can continue to try to either replace the septic system or to do sewer, but he'd be mandated to do something in the interim while he's doing exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. And now that we brought this up, I feel duty bound to add that I haven't heard of any raw sewage going down the road. No, so let's let's I. let's talk. We're talking about this in okay. hypothetical terms, let not me, actual uh, fact. Let me just uh, what we what I was just looking at. And uh, to be honest with you, I really see no reason in the world that the town would want to own this piece of property. So if somebody wanted to buy it, they could buy it and put anything they wanted on it, including a sewer easement. So I think we should authorize the town administrator to spend some time and see if he can authorize, come up with a sale and let them buy the property. Uh, and then maybe we'll even get some tax money back as a result of selling the piece of property. 
it doesn't seem to have any value to us just by the looks of it. I think the petitioner had asked to buy it at one point in time and there was no yeah. response, so he just I, moved forward. Well, that. then this is his chance. Absolutely. All right. To, uh, he's already encroaching on it anyway. We just happened to notice in the picture his fence is encroaching on the property anyway. So maybe we, he should have some conversation with town administrator. Let's, uh, let's put this off yeah. and allow the town administrator to do some, uh, some work on this, if that's okay with everybody. Other yeah, thoughts? I agree. Sell it. And sell it and see if they can get a reasonable price in demand and sell it. You get an auction coming up and put, it, put the property back on the tax roll. Absolutely. Then he doesn't need easements. If he's the lucky owner, he doesn't need it. You can just assist yeah, him. Go across his own property. <coughs> right. Makes Select sense. the white side, your thoughts? The petitioner's actually. He's here. If you want is to talk in the to audience. He's here. If well, we're not going to negotiate a land sale. No, no, I'm right not now. saying that whether he had oh, anything, to say. anything to say in support of his petition. Oh, well, he's. It's. You could call him up. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if he's here, let him. He is yeah. here. <laughs> Certainly free to advocate for his easement. And he has, at some point, offered to purchase it or something of that nature. So let's go from there. Go yes, I, I did quite a long time ago. This started back in 2012, by the way. This Use the project. mic really closely, please. Oh, this, this project started back in 2012. Mm -hmm. And back then I said, well, this easement was going to be quite lengthy which you can see it's enormously lengthy. God right. forbid if I had a real bad septic system. Right. Uh, I offered to buy the land. I think I had talked to town council. I'd send somebody here. You, I guess I talked to your secretary or something, and I, I guess we can't talk directly to people. So I sent some uh, idea that I would be interested just to s get rid of, the, rid of the easement, but then again, I don't know how much it would cost either. So I figured the easement would be the easiest way to go just to, you know, there's already some pipe running underneath that, uh, some kind of a drainage pipe for the pond or something, I believe, underneath that property. And it's been scrubbed, you know, it's pretty scrubby and a lot of trash and everything else. I really don't want to buy it and maintain it because it's just another piece of, well, it could be a another lawn to cut. You could leave it scrubby if you want. Well, yeah, but if I owned it, I'd feel responsible and want to fix it. Yeah. So I don't have that kind of money. This septic system, this, this whole project's going to cost me now it's looking like forty, forty-five thousand. I don't have that money. I'm, I'll borrow it, but it's going to cost me that much money to fix this septic system, which I could have built one. But uh, the right way really is to hook up to the town sewer. That's what we all should do. If there's a pipe there, hook up to the town sewer. Then it's done. It's complete. If it's being, because if I built a septic system, it would eventually, you know, twenty years or so, it would fail, and you'd be doing this again. So I figured this is the best way to go. I didn't realize this process would take so long. I didn't want the, you know, the, the, uh, to ask the town to do it because you know, it would be a lot more money and it would be a lot, of, you know, a, lot of, a lot of work. Just run, it, run, a, run a pipe to the town's pipe and get the sewer done. That's it. Now you've got to put it, the pump is like 10000 you know, in the pipe. It's only four feet on the ground, but it's got to go under the road. You can have police and all this. Oh, yeah. Price has gone from thirty-seven. I've got I've got bids as long, as high as eighty-something thousand dollars. I didn't pay that for the house. You know right. <laughs> what? Whatever. But back in ninety-three, I was. So I'm I'm just trying to get this thing done, the sewage thing. I don't want to get into any big projects. I'm not going to build any more apartments in it. The house is one hundred and eighty years old. Mark Turin owned it many years ago, I believe. The Turins there. I don't know if you know them. Yeah. yeah. Quite a nice fellow. And uh, I just want to get. Just get the pipe in there, you know. I like to do it as cheap as I can, but I want to do it right. Got guy's been a lot of help as far as giving me information as, you know, what's there and what can be done. So I really don't want to buy the land. I mean, there is an advantage to you. I understand you'd get a few bucks and it would go back on the tax rolls. Me, I'd have to clear the brush out. You know, I really would want to clear the brush out and put a grass there and everything else. And I suppose I wouldn't want to make, you know, but... I don't know what this thing is going to cost me. If it costs me a couple hundred bucks, fine. Well, the land. Well, you know, I think uh, well, we'll, Mr. We'll do it was Mr. given Chairman. to the town for taxes many years ago. I think that, uh, you know, given the suggestion, I certainly agree with uh, my colleague, Mr. Trapiano. Um, you know, we can just, you've been waiting this long, right? What's another week or two? Mm -hmm. uh, take a moment, call Mr. Sullivan, 
the two of you get together. Yeah, we can't negotiate a price with you right here, but yeah, I know. you might be you might be pleasantly surprised and you might not, and then you can come mm -hmm. back and Well I was told the know. process to buy land from the town is a very is quite a lengthy process. It actually has to go to town meeting and well this is a whatever if, if we get a buy that's a complicated thing and already I it's think going to depend on whose cust who's custodial custodialship it's in right. if it's under the uh, treasurer collector through the as a tax parcel that one we could probably add to the to the next auction uh, we have another property that we need to discuss that was turned over to the uh, selectmen and those would take longer on that so it's going to depend on because I think I was looking it up and it said uh, tax foreclosure. So this one, yeah, that's so. Attorney Bowen. Uh, Mr. Chair, and members of the board. Uh, either way, be it by tax title or by 30B section 16 procurement, we could not steer the property to any particular individual, including Mr. Christofferson. If it's tax title property, uh, it's our obligation to sell it to the highest bidder to recoup the taxes that we didn't get. And if Mr. Christofferson were the highest bidder, he'd get it. Uh, if it's a 30B Section 16 procurement on the Uniform Procurement Act, we go through the business of advertising and soliciting bids. And of course, again, it's a situation where the party who bids the most for the piece of property is the one who gets it. So again, we couldn't steer it to Mr. Christofferson. So uh, well, I guess that's the bottom line. We were, yeah, I, I, Mr. Chairman, I, we weren't really suggesting that. No, no, I, I know. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, there, there is an auction on the uh, tax collector schedule already. So that's what we were talking about. But he could get offline with him and talk about that directly. And I, but in either case, I think I hear you saying if it goes through the tax collector's office and the auction is held Saturday and he's the low bidder, then Monday he could take the property. He doesn't have to go to town meeting and all that. So that's his, one of his concerns. With, with your permission, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Sweckman Holmes is absolutely right. There's a tax title auction, the highest bidder, plus the auctioneer's commission. He's got it. No right. trip to town meeting. Right. That's what we're talking about. So I'll do double check um, how that was redeemed and such, see where the property is. We have a contract with an auctioneer who will, as part of that contract, what they do is go out and they will film the property. They will put it in newspapers. This will be one of them that they put out there. And uh, there's no extra cost to the town on it either. So. Good. Could I could I just get the easement and then later on you could sell it? I mean, no, have an auction. Sell it. Once the easement's on there, it's going to be impossible to sell. Nobody will want it. Well, there is already is a pipe someplace in there. I mean, a big well, pipe for the drainage. That's one easement. So I'm going to put a little two-inch pipe. Doesn't show anywhere here that there's a pipe uh -huh. in there. Is there? Well, through you, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Campino, is there another easement on this land? I'm not aware of it. The, the engineer would have placed it in there, but I'll find out if there there may be a drainage easement. Everything drains to that pond from Glen Charlie, old Glen Charlie Road at this point, so there very well may be a, a drainage well, easement. Well, we, we would know. I don't just know. look at the yeah. deed. Yes, we can. Yeah, the value of the property is going to be steered by whether it's buildable or not, which is part of the auction. We get a letter from the uh, the um, building commissioner. So. Um, and I think that's what, to sell, if I'm hearing the, the board correctly as well, we want to see what the true value of that property right. is. Exactly. So. Exactly. Because we don't want to reduce the town's value. That's all. Well, I don't want to anyway. I mean, I think we, we, we as a board, in my estimation is to, our job is to represent the town and the best interest of it. And what we get out of the property and what the best use of the value of the property and so on is, is in the best interest of the town in my estimation. If we put a, an easement on it and then nobody ever wants it and we just got a parcel that can't go on the tax rolls or anything else, what's the sense? Yeah, this auction already represents properties worth, worth several thousand, several hundred thousand. So right. it's already within the range. Right, so but we don't know what it would be worth. But. 
So let's just. So I guess that didn't really answer my question. We need to find out some more. So is there pipes running under this ground already? And were there well, prior easements given? Do you know? We I can know. find Engineer out. Engineer didn't figure that out. No, Nobody he didn't. Knows. We could well, ask. But look, I can find it out tomorrow. I'll definitely find out what's on that property as far as easements for drainage. Uh, make sure that they're town easements, not state easements. I'm not so sure, but I'll look at that. Perhaps we could ask Attorney Bowen to check and see if there are any recorded Gap, easements. Gap Engineering. Property, Patrick, by uh, the town. Well, there could be. Uh, Gap Engineering. Me, who prepared the uh, town council? Were you involved in the preparation of this easement? Because then you would have reviewed the deed. And, of course, if there was an easement on it, you would have known. Uh, Mr. Chairman, through you, uh, the uh, direction was that the proper owner would bear the responsibility and the cost of preparing the documents. I have reviewed the easement document, right. and it's acceptable as I the form. Yeah. Okay. So we don't know without looking at the deed. So, I mean, the first thing Dennis would have to do is go downstairs and look at the deed, obviously, and which is easy enough to do. And the deed would tell you, right, if there's an easement, it's there. And if it is, then that might be another problem for us because then maybe we can't get rid of it because we, we need the easement for, the, for whatever the drain is. Right, in which, in which case, case the, the property's valueless. In which case, then maybe we give him the easement. You know what I'm saying? It's the plans are a manhole, so I'll, I'll go over to get this we, we have to put it off for another week until we find out what the deal is with the yeah. property. But you're hearing what the board is saying. I, I think it's in, in your interest as well not to press us for a decision tonight. So why don't we put this off uh, for another week? We can come back to it. Uh, with the information, uh, do you have? Uh, well, you're going through Attorney Bellow, so we can contact him with any requests for information or information we need to provide to you. So, yeah, you can call me up too. I, I'll, you know, I'm trying to keep the cost down here. I've already, I've already paid an, <laughs> yeah, already paid an attorney. I've got $5,000 right? in engineering <laughs> costs, and we have. So to I hope Len isn't watching this meeting, but that's okay. Yeah, Roy uh, has a phone too, you know. Yeah, Roy has a phone. Yeah. You guys call me anytime. Call I, anybody I keep it else, on me. Weekend, you, know, yeah. call, you can call me anytime, and I'll. Okay, Mr. Sullivan, perhaps you could get his contact information. You want a phone number? No, I get my own. I'll give you my name and my phone number. That's the only phone I got. That's it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, nowadays that's it. You call me, not my home. Yeah. Well, are, are we all set with Mr. Christopherson for now? All right, it, look, folks, right, this, this should be happening in front of everybody. If we're going to be looking at documents and everything else, they should go up on the easel so everybody right. can see. Let's, uh, let's come back to this next week. All right, uh, next week we can get our ducks in a row here, see we what the property uh, we is. So we're good. Okay. It's Thank nice you for your time you, tonight. We'll see you again next week. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Okay, next up, any other sewer business? No, just that's all. I just wanted to announce that tomorrow morning, our first load from Canada, our podsies will be delivered, 2,200 of them, and we'll get a delivery each week, and that's to cover the basin to address the sewer odors uh, and that basin for the neighborhood. So we're pretty excited about that. The first delivery is tomorrow. We're pretty excited about it. Tell me about the solar project. How are we doing with that? We're doing pretty good. Uh, Friday, we have a meeting. Of, they're going to make some presentations to us, the different types of options we have as a, a community. They're looking into our total consumption. Um, yeah, we're moving right along. And so Friday how, will be a really big day for how us. How many megawatts are you planning on? I well, anywhere from 1.6 to 2.2, 2, 2, 1 1.6 to 2.2. 2. And so mm -hmm. right now we're trying to decide to go behind the meter, in front of the meter, and the SRX. We're doing a seminar tomorrow on the SRX2 program, which is very close to being completed. So we'll do that seminar tomorrow. So, yeah, we're pretty excited. Uh, but you're invited uh, uh, 11 o'clock um, uh, Friday at the treatment plant. We've got... The uh, next era coming in. Uh, we've got a representative from the town, um, uh, from your uh, selectman Slavin, from your Cadmus. board, is, uh, and Cadmus will be there. 
um, and then the people that's called separate separate the name that's going to do the actual crunching of the numbers for total projection in town so it's pretty exciting we're, we're doing well we're really moving along All right, thank thanks you. one last thing uh, I know I spoke with uh, select with Tropiano in the past few days we were trying to get a sense of when uh, folks would like to proceed with the tie and bond crew on the uh, study of how we charge for sewer and so forth. Uh, we're, we're thinking about uh, having another presentation before the board and then a workshop, uh, because I think it would be helpful to, to get the ideas out that they might have, uh, sort of the comparative different ways of billing first, get them out in the public arena first, people can take a look at it, and then have a workshop. I think trying to do it all at a workshop is just going to lead to uh, chaos. So my sense is it's better off getting it out here first and then a workshop. Yeah, my, my sense is that this is not going to be rocket science, that this is not going to require as much as you think to make this work. I mean, everybody else is doing it the way that I think we should do it, in my estimation. And we, the, the issue is going to be the 6% of locations that aren't tied to one of the water departments, one of the water systems. They have their own well, whatever. In which case, we have to decide how we're going to handle those, and that would be really, in my estimation, the problem, uh, where the crux is. As far as working the numbers, the numbers are easy to work. Yeah, if you're going to charge a minimum base and then so much for flow, if you're going to charge just on flow, whatever, I mean, that's, that works out. And then, of course, you get to, uh, to take your operational costs, which I think we're pretty close at finding now. We have those. Okay, so you take that and you've got to divide it into the numbers and, you know, the whole thing. So. With, with all of that, uh, I suppose it would be a good time to find out where we are with the DOR review. Perfect segue. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the Department of Revenue came back for a, uh, for a second day to come in, met with uh, myself, uh, had uh, Selectman Whiteside there, because um, she had been very interested in this report to begin with. And then they went on to the water pollution control facility again to interview um, the staff. And uh, at, uh, I think it was clerical staff level within the department as well as yourself again. Um, we have a time frame of approximately six weeks before we'll get the report back from them. Um, we're not paying them, so we're, I don't think we can strong arm yeah, yeah. them for, for <laughs> <laughs> to get it done any sooner. Yeah, call them up and say, "Yeah, hey, get that report down here. So, uh, I think it'll be several years down the road before we're strong arming the DOR yeah, on anything. Yeah. <laughs> they have requested some additional information that we're sending out to them, and uh, I think there's going to be it's going to be a thorough report uh, and a and a well well worth management report that I think will help us. Uh, uh, you know, manage manage it in uh, the way that it deserves. Because so. I think that that's going to play a role in, in in how this goes as well. I think. Yeah, and uh, by that statement, that sounded bizarre. Almost, it's not saying that there's anything wrong. We need a future plan into this, and that's what we're we were helping them from. I know they were very complimentary of guy probably too much for my taste so i don't know what you told them <laughs> they did they toured the facility well i think that's to me it was really important because they walked the entire facility it was a, a young lady um, the gentleman who is in wastewater and um, uh, water and who's now with the department of revenue and then the gentleman that works with the, the town and so they walked the nooks and crannies and saw exactly what we're doing there to get to understand it and so they can apply their knowledge to wastewater and course to enterprise fund and the department of revenue and and so it's going to be pretty extensive and and we had a great time I and mean, it was a good time to interchange as far as talking about wastewater and what it does and to talk to somebody who understands it that was to me was really exciting and so that we we had a, a, a good conversation about wastewater and what we're doing there with our had goals a great time and it was exciting it was really i had a great time, great time it was, was great. had by all we sat around the, uh, the big stir there and <laughs> absolutely and he, he, I was going to drink the water, try to get him to drink the water from beginning to end. And Probably a little good bit time was so had I, by all. Know, we put yeah. good water out there. So that yeah, was pretty exciting. I'm excited, yeah. excited about it. I, I, I never understand this stuff, but the company that is looking at the uh, user fees mm -hmm. to bond. tell us you know, Tie and bond, yes. what their recommendation is, have they finished their work? They've gone as far as they could. Now we're waiting for the second part would be the actual, 
let me explain to you. They've um, taken all the expenses, right. figured out what our expenses are, and, and they've taken all the water, which was a project in itself, so we can actually tell you what the consumption is, everybody in the sewer. Right. They've done a map overlaying it through GIS, creating their own GIS. And so now they can make some predictions. And so it, they're looking for the town, to, you folks, the directions to how they want to go. They, all they can do is recommend to you the different things they're seeing. Some of the issues that we're going to have to vet through is strength of product, and one of them is industry. We've got some factories now in town where I am, and I know that we're a sleepy community and we really don't believe there's industry, but I found some plating factories. I found some circuit board factories. Oh, I, these, sure. these are out there. Absolutely, they're out yeah. there. And so now you're talking about strength of product. We've got a, a factory that puts out quite a bit of grease, and so their BOD is extended. So we've got to figure out how we're going to build that. Can't build them the same thing I'm going to build you for your, your drinking water or your water coming out of your pipe. So there's some things that, that they're going to have to really vet through and we're going to have to and, and, and tie in some type of industrial pretreatment program into this because there'll be extra charge. There'll be a BUD charges related to flow and all that issue with the, with the businesses. So we're trying to vet through that. we got letters out to all the businesses looking for what they're and doing. We are paying there. these people. I'm sorry? We are paying these people. You're paying these people. We contracted them right. for, for, for a cost, and yes. Right. And so they've come to the end of their contract, and now they, matter of fact, they call me today for direction. All right. So, so they're ready at this point to come and give a presentation. Yes, they're ready for workshops. I think we told them that we're going to have some workshops. They're ready right. for workshops. So, you know, I don't go for this. I, I, don't, I don't believe in telling consumers how they should feel or letting them. I'm not smart enough or powerful enough to suggest that I'm going to let them digest something before having a discussion. Look, we had a great meeting a few weeks back over in Onset with the Parkin Study Group. Alan was there. Yeah. Uh, where the company came in. They were paid. They came in. They gave a beautiful presentation. We had over 100 people there, right? Yeah. yeah it was well That's attended. Fun. That was no big deal about letting them digest some presentation before we had a chance to talk about it. It was really nice. So why do we have to keep putting things off? Let's just have a meeting some night in the evening. We can go, to, we can go here to the auditorium. We can go anywhere and just have them come in and do it and just everybody get together. Why can't we just do that? Absolutely. Instead we of having can. two oh. meetings and then three meetings, let's just have a big thing, invite everybody. Well, understand we that a work cable TV we can do it in the auditorium or in the school auditoriums. Well, uh, a workshop by its terms includes audience participation. So my yeah. concern was I want people to know what it is before they show up to talk about it. Well, we had we had people get up that night and uh, and uh, talk and ask questions, and the people who did the the parking work. I mean, they answered all the questions. It was no big deal. Let's just yeah, keep moving. This, well, I'll, I'll think about it. This, this issue is a little more complicated than... Uh, well, I don't know that you need well, to think I don't know about, about onset parking. The Board of Selectmen need to think about it. Man. They don't decide how people digest information. I say let's just have the meeting and get moving. Selectman Whiteside? Um, when I met with the DOR, it was really interesting, and they, as Mr. Sullivan said, were very complimentary of you and your staff. Unfortunately, because of the Enterprise Fund, Accounting. It is not something that can be understood overnight. I actually, with 23 years of banking experience, had to go and print the entire document about remembering how to do enterprise fund accounting. And so when I was talking with the DOR and listening to their questions, um, it, it occurred to me that I have professional background in that kind of accounting, and it still was a tough hall for me to get through it and to understand exactly where we were going. So I think that that a, a presentation workshop is a good idea and then have information on it. I, I, I'm, I know that people are concerned about the costs. I know that people are concerned about um, the progress or lack thereof. But I don't think that having only one meeting is going to solve anything, to be honest with you. I didn't say, uh, Mr. Chairman, I didn't say have one meeting. I never said that at all. Okay. What I'm saying is they're ready to give a presentation. Let's schedule it across the street at 7 o'clock any given night you want or 7.30. Have them come in. Invite the public to the presentation. Mm -hmm. What's so difficult about that? Well, I don't have a problem with them coming to a presentation. What I don't want it to turn into is a six-hour meeting where people are saying, if you do this, I'm going to pay that much. 
It's not a sit-down. That's, well, that, that's well, what it, a, a that's workshop it. is going to be lengthy on this, Steve. This no, is a radical I, the shift. The project is lengthy, Mr. Chairman. It's already too lengthy. We asked for this. This has been going on for years. It's time to put this thing to rest and get something done. The way you present something to the public is you say, we're going to have a meeting. Uh, Joe is going to give a presentation. Mary is going to talk about this. And then there's going to be some questions and answers. Or not all your answers are going to be here. They aren't going to change the system in that night. You, you, you preface that to the public. Let them know what you're doing. Well, and you say, you know, the meeting's going to be over by, you know, 10 o'clock. You put a cutoff on it. The one, thing, the one thing you have to remember. And then you keep coming back, and then what's the next steps here? And yeah. you have to schedule something. You have to do something. Yeah. But, you know, this thing of we have to be reviewed before we let public digest. And, I mean, come on. Let's just have the presentation. The one thing that's interesting to me is that uh, when they were here for their first presentation, if you remember right, there was 11 communities that used the EDU, including us. 11. That mean, there's 351 cities and towns, right. and only 11 of the communities are, are using the EDU. That tells you that the EDU is not, not a fair and equitable method, and we all know that. There's, everybody knows that. It's not fair to the, to the sewer department. It, when you take the industrial waste into account and try to attach an EDU to them, it's not fair either so. because that's not getting treated properly and everybody else is bearing the cost of it. You know, I'm not saying it's not getting treated properly. Well, I probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> Meaning that You're you have to it. treat it at the cost of everyone else. Pays and so, you, so, so this is, the, the, the methods are out there, obviously. Every, people have done this uh, for a long time. Uh, like I say, 11 communities, 11. Right. That tells you that we're on the wrong side of the fence on this one, I would think. But. No, well, look at the, find the, out. Question, the question was, you know, can we have a meeting with the public and have this presentation or can. not? That's the question. Well, Selectman Slavin, what do you think? That Mr. Chairman asked. I think it's important that we get out to the public and see what the alternatives are to how we can do this. I've actually uh, had a friend who recently moved to Indiana who just sent me his sewer bill and his water bill. And the way they do it is quite interesting. I'll bring in a copy and show it. Break it down to a base price. Sorry, Bob. They break it down to a base price, and they're up to ten thousand gallons, and they've got some taxes and fees. It, it's really thorough, and it also shows if it was an industrial, the, where the surcharge would be, etc. So I think the first piece really is to get out to the public what the options are, to at least so they have a feel of what we're trying to do, and then we can sit there in another meeting, and then dial in uh, how we're going to do it. The decision's going to be ours with the input from the public. But I think the first thing is to get out there f what the options are. That's the piece we stopped at last time because we weren't ready yet. And let's do it together. That's, yeah. why, that's what I'm I trying to say a, here. Do it together. I don't have a real problem, obviously, with the public coming in because you only learn when you get input from the stakeholders, and they're, and they're the stakeholders. I'm just not so sure it should be evening. I think it should be a Saturday afternoon, Saturday morning. That's my only input because more people have an opportunity to come. Some are limited at night. So I just think if we're going to do this and have the public involved, it should be a more conducive time for all. And I think Yeah, I want to say that we, we did that uh, meeting, was it on a Wednesday or a Thursday at 7 o'clock? Yeah, but that was, a, that was, a, seven that was an onset-centric onset meeting, so it well, was, it was, e it was, it was right. easy to uh, take care of it that uh, way. Yeah, I don't care when it is. It doesn't but, uh, matter whether it's during the evening or on Saturday. I mean, we're paying them, so did yeah. we pay? Well, if we the subject is interesting enough, you'll get the people out. I know when we talked about the snow <laughs> removal, hey, we did that at, what, 4 in the afternoon? The night the Board and of Health had those requirements across that street, the, the parking lot there. You, you couldn't get in. Yeah. room only in the parking lot. So. You start talking about people's money, they'll show up. I don't think the time you is know. an issue. I'd like to see it on a Saturday for one reason. This is one of the few times where uh, non-residents pay and actually have a say this way because right. they can't vote most of the time. At least we can, hear, at least we can hear from, from them. That's, that's a good point. They pay for water even though they don't live here. Yeah, they pay for the sewer. So. The sewer. It would be nice for them to actually no. have some input for a change. Well, if that's the ins uh, if, if that's the way it is, then we won't call it citizens' participation. We'll call it taxpayer <laughs> participation, uh, because obviously, yeah, well, you're going to have to specify who can talk. It doesn't have to be an official board of selectmen meeting either. No. 
It'll be a public workshop. You don't have to. Yeah, it'll be a public workshop. So it it'll could be, be a different. public. It could be a public meeting to have the presentation. That's yeah. what yeah. we're doing with the TDR as a public workshop. It's yeah. The same idea. Oh yeah, it's going to go out as a workshop. It's not going to be a formal selectman's meeting with all the rigmarole. All right. Okay. Well, Let's put we'll, we'll get we'll get so, the schedule shortly. So I want to do something by the at, end of the month. Can we look at maybe the twenty uh, second or the 29th? I'm not interested in letting this go another week until we have at least a couple of dates to run back by the company. I, I was in contact with. Well, there is no 29th, but tell me the uh, date. Well, <laughs> yeah, 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 because the 22nd is the end of the kids' vacation, right? So yes. that's only a week. That's no good. So what is it? The first, March mm -hmm. 1st, or the 8th? March 1st or the 8th. It gives them March two weeks first, to March get 8th. all the final do, stuff. I can't do the 8th. I can. I can so March 1st. I can't do the 8th. I'm going to be away. First or the 15th? First I can do or the 15th. Judy? I'm going to be here. Huh? I'm going to be here. Let's shoot for those two days and then we can get the Just notice out to the out of towners, first, especially those. When are you? Uh, uh, next surgery would probably be right now. We're looking at around the 19th of March. Okay, so, so that'll be before. Days covered. Yep. yep. All right, why don't, you, why don't you take a look and see if we can get them in on a Saturday morning. Uh, Let's really focus on the 15th then. That gives us first to the fifteenth. Four weeks to get the word out, and uh, so guy, if, as soon as you get back to us, then we get March something 1. out, especially to the people who live who own property, but they're not here. March first, fifteenth. March fifteenth. That gives Ty and Bond sufficient time to have it all ready. Beware Actually, the odds. What would be March. nice if Ty and Bond? We can go drinking me. after it. Guy, if Ty St. and St. Patrick's Day is Monday. <laughs> You mean Excuse me. If Ty and Bond has yeah, we'll the presentation we'll ready, yeah. All right, let's 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 let Alan talk, please. If they have it ready, it'd be nice. They could send it over to Matt Underhill. He could put it up on the town website, and anybody could get to it and look at it ahead of time. Yeah. It's one of the things that we don't do that we should be doing is getting it out to the public in advance of discussion. Thank you. And just let us know through Mr. Sullivan if that doesn't work. You can get an email out to us and we can adjust. Absolutely. Our, our, so our 15th I'm shooting for. Is there any alternative date? No, I think that. Leave it there for now. Yeah, we for if they, okay. We're paying them. If they can't make an adjustment in six weeks, that's a problem. Yeah, okay. I think that's plenty. Um, Anything else for uh, any other so business? Day, is it? What? Well, we want to deal with that EDU problem that we have, and um, you want to put that on for another date now that we have the letter and everything? Letter. Receive the letter. You should have had a copy put in your packets. No. No. It's not okay. Good. That's okay. Right. We have received we one, coming. so I would say. So the it's the 11th. Can you put it for an abatement? Yeah. Oh, so we should be kind of come up on the agenda. Actually, we had noticed it before as a review of the EDU rate structure. I think that might be, uh, we, we can do it either way. Well, why don't we just, why don't you put the letter together and get it to everybody so they can read it as well. And we can we'll do yeah, I'll, get it, I'll get it on an agenda in the we'll next couple of weeks. How about the, 20, yeah. the 25th? Because the, the, eight, the 18th, we have to close the warrant. That's fine with me. So why don't we try for the 25th? Okay. Then okay. we can deal with it. Yep. I think we have abatements on next week. Well, this is separate. Yeah, this this goes beyond an abatement, I think. This is this is looking at specifically. This is this is a policy. We need to talk about the policy as well as abatements. I mean, we need to. Yeah, that's why. It's 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 a problematic situation. That's yeah, all. we went over that last week. Yeah, especially as regards one class of property owner. Yeah, exactly. So, then may I just ask that the information not just about the specific person, individual business that has asked for that, but could we have information on how many businesses are similar to that in town? That would probably be a good thing to come it's, up in with. In other words, can we please have some homework yeah. in the packet before we start making good Yeah, ideas. you wouldn't want to be discussing the fees and the abatement the same night. That's not appropriate. Yeah, I think, I think we're going to look at the policy. Why don't we take and then, a look and then, and then we can worry about it, it as an abatement. Let us know how you want to handle it. Okay. Yeah. 25th to start. We'll get it done. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks. So Thank you. Happens. So I'm clear. Are we going to, there's other folks that are complaining about hotels and laundromats. Are we going to approach all those or just this one specific? Are we going to approach, generally speaking, all EDU fares, all those other businesses too that have complaints? Yes. So we're going to we're gonna, yes. we're gonna, we're look at the rate sheet and see. We're going to look at that rate sheet, guy. We're going to look at the rate sheet and the way it's set up. Yeah, we are. Yeah, you right. can't just go by the one letter and deal with one 
That's not fair. I just I don't know. It's, it's, I got to prepare for the night, so I'm just when my direction is going to be the, how the, I'm prepared because I have many letters. I have letters from motels. I've got letters from from laundromats. I have many letters saying that it's not fair. It's not equitable. Yeah, we should have. So we got to address all the EDU every rate, and what are we going to base it? What are we going to base it on? Flow. I mean, how are we going to? I mean, that's what I'm saying. What is our right. background going to be? I think. I think. Should I think not have an abatement on yeah. the agenda while you're discussing that schedule. That's inappropriate. Yeah, absolutely not. If we're setting policy, we're setting yeah, we policy. Should, if we're going to discuss one rate, we discuss the 20 that were on that piece of paper. Right. That's yeah. easy. Point, point, of order. point of order. Um, if you have, if we are waiting for the tie-in bond report and we're actually waiting for a workshop and we're waiting for maybe a conversation about switching from the EDU way of doing business like the other 11, 10 people, 10 towns, aren't, isn't this a premature um, conversation to have because you, we, I'm guessing, are going to be changing the EDU structure to a different way of billing. Well, we can't presuppose that. I mean, I, I know a lot of people are thinking that way, but, but, but I don't think we can even say that until we have that information from Ty and Bond before us. Yeah. So with that in mind, if you're looking at okay. somebody who's got a problem with a rate structure, and I look at that rate structure and I got a problem with it, then I think you address the rate structure, and if you eventually, look, if that lasts three weeks and then you t shift to a different system, you shift to a different system. Okay. Yeah, because if you don't do that, Mrs. Whiteside, what's going to happen is when that guy's abatement comes in, or others that Mr. Campina has letters from, mm -hmm. then we can only sit here and say, here's the policy, tough luck. Right. Right. But if we address the rate structure without the letters in the room, which mm -hmm. is appropriate, we can fix it and then let the letters come in. We shouldn't even read those letters ahead of time so that we don't know who the people are. And let's just discuss the rate structure and do it. If we want to change it, let's change it. Yeah. And then let the letters come in, and then let it be what it is. Okay, but why can't we do just that next week? Why can't we just deal with that? I next, mean, that's just, well, that's we, what board of so No, because we have we to close a workshop. For that. No, we don't need a workshop. I've got it down for the twenty-fifth already. Yeah. Next week's a little busy, so. All right. So on the twenty-fifth, we have time, two weeks to review. And then we come here and, and just keep the agenda low that night, and let's finish the right structure, and then we can bring in the we're done. Yep. Can right. we, yes, but can we know how many motels there are? Can we know how many blah blahs there because are? Because you're affecting the revenues. So yeah. when you do one group, you realize what that group is, and you'll have to know what the EDs are out there, what that cost is. So going to the 2015 budget, that's all. So we just can prepare for it. So yeah, so we'll have to know if you want that. I need to know what you're looking for. That's I, I would like that information. my research is going to be. Well, uh, don't we have you as liaison to the sewer department? No. Yeah, I no, don't have I one. think it's me. It's you. Oh. 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 You shouldn't have raised your hand. Just yeah. Like, now you're in trouble. No, I'm pretty sure it's me. Pretty Is sure that difficult to pull together in a couple of weeks? <laughs> he doesn't have it on until the 25th. I, I can well, I'll go back to the point. We'll just have to, we're right now doing it. You have to be a, you know, you don't we'll just to, give you generalization. Yeah, you so have to say do. just 32 of these. You know, just give us a good ballpark of what we're, what we're yeah. looking at. Right? I'll give you the real number because we're right. going to have to But it does affect it. I understand that. The dollar. You know, do you have to have an exact dollar figure? No, but you certainly can't be winging it if you're. I didn't you're, say wing it. I excuse me, Mr. Holmes. I'm. Well, when you move, I can't around, believe we've actually been talking revenue. about this for 40 uh, minutes. Well, well, I agree, but this is important. But I understand that. But if you move them around, it could be that when we figured the rate, we figured it wrong to begin with. Exactly. I, I didn't say wing it. Like say there's a hundred. If there's actually 500, I said at least get it close. So I would like the specific numbers. Thirty-two of these. That's fine. Can, can you come up with some ideas about how many users are in a specific it. category? Yes. Okay. That's that's it's what we're looking for here. Uh, residential users, commercial users, and we can break it down further if you like into what type of business. Yes, if you could I somewhat like break it, it down, down in accordance further. with the EDU sheet, that would be the most yeah. helpful, I think, is what that's Selectman exactly Whiteside is getting at. That's exactly what we're looking yes. for. Because I can do it in six. Also, what type of business is it? Just follow the perfect. You're talking our language now. Yeah. If you follow the sheet, go down how many EDUs there are, and then we figure it out. Just fill in the blanks. Use the sheet. I think is the easiest way. Yeah. Should be really easy. So. And then that way we'll know if there's a significant revenue loss, we're going to have to revote the user rates to make right. it, bring Which it back in line. About, we yeah. only did six months anyway, remember? Right. Yeah, so. All right, 25th. Somebody just counted all this stuff in the last we'll couple We'll block of out months. a good hour and a half for that one. 
Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> That's be fine because we'll get it done, and then we can yep. deal with the letters and yep. get those those people taken care of. Very good. Just so like when uh, before we know it, there'll be new sewer commissioners. There you go. Okay. So like when, not, not in this take, election. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's going to take a while, brother. Because we don't want to be in the middle of something. And then we, good point. Yeah. So like when Slavin, you won't see new sewer commissioners until uh, spring 2015 no, at I the earliest. That. I knew that, but th yeah. this is nice. why it would be nice to get all the mess out of the way and the changeover, whatever. So they can start off fresh. In the continuity fresh. of the board, and then when they turn over, they, you know, they, they're on their own, so to speak. Or they'd be, no, I was they'd thinking be, of April. You may have a change in the board in April. There'd be less... Less of a mess, you know. I would ask, and I'm not trying to insult anybody, that we follow Robert's rules as we proceed here. We have as many as four people talking over each other at the same time. Sorry. It's confusing to the audience. It's confusing to the people in front of us. And uh, I'm getting a headache. <laughs> I apologize. Fair enough. Thank you. Okay. So you're sorry, Patrick. Any other sewer business for Mr. Campina? No, nothing so. We all set. Thank you for a lengthy and interesting conversation. Thank you. Good night. Okay, next item, please. You think we can fuse Mr. Campino? Yes. <laughs> you think we'll come back with different information? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, we have discussion. Item A should not be on there because that's once a month. So I'm going actually, I want to say, mention something in this section, if I can. It's on the agenda. agenda. Go right ahead. If I can. Go ahead. All right. So in the, in the past when we had a, and I don't want to, a different town administrator, and I was on a different board, one of the things that the town administrator did for us, which I thought was very helpful, was in each packet, in the packet had what he planned on bringing up that night and some information about what's been going on in the town as far as well, I did such and such, this happened, you know, whatever, different odd things. He used to write a little report, and it would be in the packet. So that way we could review it ahead of time, and there was no surprises, uh, you know, as far as what he was going to bring up to us that night and so on and so forth. And it gave us time to think about it before we got to the meeting, which I kind of like. And I don't know if that's something you have time to do or not, Derek. I know you're a busy guy. But... Uh, Joe Murphy was the guy that used to do this for us and it worked out really well we were much better informed uh, we were much not only better informed but had our finger more on the on the pulse of things because he was able to give us some of the insight into what was going on and I always appreciated those reports because they really made me feel like we were a team you know we were together and uh, I'd like to see if there's somehow you can maybe find your way to do something like that for us. Can you give us some idea how, how far into detail these I things might, went? No, or? Then, then they're very, uh, you know what? I might have some of his old reports, believe it or not, and I'll give you one. And you can take a look at it and see if it fits for you or if it doesn't fit for you. Maybe you want to modify it. That's okay. You know, it's what you want to do. I don't want to give you – I want to have the information, and I want to feel like we're all part of the same team. I want that to happen. I don't want to direct you on how to do it, but I'd like to see something in this nature, some, some a little more input in this nature. Would that be uh, something you might be able to do? If I, I could get you probably a copy of one of his old reports. I think I have a lot of that old stuff if I go digging through my basement somewhere. We can take a look at those. And, uh, That'd be great. I just ask, remember the staffing levels. Then well, the I office. understand that. And that's why I said right away, do you think you'll have time for this? You know, uh, under, the, uh, under the view of the fact that he had a much bigger staff than you have. <laughs> so, that, I'd appreciate if you could send those and we could go. Yeah, I'll, I'll get you something right. that you can take a look at. Thank you. All right, thanks. Next item. Next item up is the articles hey, that we have. Oh, 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 wait a minute. I'm sorry. Are we not, oh, did you have are some we not still under A? We were. Yeah. You, you, oh, okay. You missed it. We're going to eliminate it. But that's <laughs> oh, no, it. I had my hand up under A. So. And did you say you were taking this off? No. We agreed, we agreed, I think, a month or so ago that we would only have it on for the first meeting of each month. We had it last week on the agenda. For... Uh, for guidance, the town administrator only once. So we would any guidance we had, we'd bring up under his report. That's the way we had left it. Okay. 
Uh, I actually have a couple items uh, that yeah, I need to. Go ahead, uh, please. Uh, number one is uh, officially, Mr. Sullivan, uh, back to the parking uh, um, issues. Uh, I, I haven't been invited to a meeting yet. Um, we talked about that. Um, and I do want to make sure that people applying this for the summer um, understand that they're not going to be using those lots as revenue for their events. That they're going to be used as revenue for the town. Um, that's not being mean-spirited. It's just what it is. Uh, the second item I have here is um, on the budget. Last week, I uh, brought up the uh, gas station issue, right? And so I did call, follow up with Mr. Sullivan, and I'm going to work on that uh, with the different department heads, pull that project together to see what kind of numbers we're looking at and how we can move forward with that. Number three, uh, I found especially troubling this week. Um, I, I do pay attention. Uh, sometimes I am away. Uh, last week we talked about the 500,000 that the uh, DOR has recommended uh, that we uh, try to peel down right before July 1st. Uh, and I asked about where the contributions were coming from. And the superintendent, who I'm really becoming very impressed uh, by her each day, not that she needs me to be impressed by anything, but I saw a comment by her in the newspaper that uh, she would have difficulty contributing because the school overspent last year's budget by $400,000 or three and change. Does anybody know anything about this? We. Mr. Sullivan? I guess yeah. that was to yeah. you because yes. this is your. I do know about could it, you, yes. Could you fill us in on exactly what this is all about? Yes, yeah, so at, at the end of fiscal year 13, uh, when they were running their expenditure reports, it showed that there was a surplus. Uh, they had approximately, I believe it was 330,000, I believe it was a surplus at the time. And as such, um, the, the then um, superintendent and staff had uh, purchased items with the, the monies that they had. When we closed the books and we're going through it, there was a discrepancy of 330,000. As such, when you ran the, um, the right VADAR report, it showed where the money should be. So as such, they had overexpended their budget by, um, I believe it was 330,000. When uh, you say, if I might just follow up, Mr. Chairman, a couple of quick questions. When you say at the end of the year, uh, what are we talking about here, May? April, May, June, third, fourth quarter. What are we talking about? No, it would have been into the next fiscal year when you've closed the books. That they no, I mean, this. no, I mean when they ran the reports that said they were three hundred and change over, or if they had three hundred and change left. I wouldn't. I wouldn't know what the the approximate time frame for those reports. I would have said it was probably the last quarter. If you're down to three hundred some odd thousand, or where you're trending. All right. So in the last quarter, we can assume. Could, could you get some more background on this? Because I got to tell you, if it's in the last quarter, uh, that would really, uh, really irk me. Uh, and it should irk every warm body in town. Because in the last quarter of last year, we were having meetings in libraries, uh, talking about percentages on both sides to cut to make life easy. And if somebody there, they didn't have the money actually, as it turned out, right? But if somebody there in that room knew that there was a report that said they were uh, 300 and whatever it was under budget and we're all sitting there trying to make those decisions, I think there could have been some offer to use some of that money to help us out. So I'd like to have some more facts on that. I don't want to, um, I don't want to assume anything and that's why I'm trying to ask you because you are the town administrator mm -hmm. and that falls under you. Uh, at some point in the town structure, and it just goes to lend itself to the credence that we should, uh, back to my drumbeat in, under this part of your report, that this town really needs a $60 million budget, and we do not have somebody watching the figures. 
over both, or over all of the town, like a CFO kind of person. We don't have that. Because if we did, this would not have happened. Because there would have been the overseer of our total book, right, would have caught that. Somebody would have come and said, hey, I got 330 grand. Uh, and then when, it, when the other reports were run, they would have said, hey, no, you forgot this piece over here. So I, I would like to get some more detail on that because, um, you know, people are being asked or they may be asked or probably not going to be asked, who knows, to pony up more money. And that's an issue, I got to tell you. So, um, oh, the other thing was. May I respond to that before you go on? I don't know. No. That's up to the chairman. Go ahead. May I? That's up to the chairman. Okay. Yeah. Um, while I agree with you requiring the information, um, there is an entirely new set of individuals running the books. Um, Ms. Shaverhood and Michael McMillan um, have been working closely with Mr. Sullivan. And while I think it's, we should have an explanation as to when that money was expended, um, but I don't want to pound on something that wasn't the responsibility of Ms. Shaverhood or Mr. McMillan because there has been a huge improvement in the um, conversation, the ability to com communication between the school portion of the town and the town portion of the town. And I would just respectfully suggest that that it may be that you're not, okay. Mr. Chairman, my mic may have been off and maybe I didn't have the button pushed, so I'll say it one more time for the record. Uh, I'm very impressed with what I see of the new superintendent of our school system. Not that she needs me to be impressed by her professionalism, mm -hmm. but I am very impressed by her. The actions, whatever this was, did not take place while she was here. That's I correct. understand that. We're talking about last year. That's correct. Yeah, but the, the school board who was there is still here, um, who oversaw the management of that administrator. So well, this happened last year, and I understand that. But you know what? It affects this year. And somebody in that room, or many in that room, that we sat there, if it was fourth quarter, knew that this money could have been available. So it has nothing to do with Ms. Shaver. No, it wasn't available. Oh, how do you know? Because they, they ended spent, the year. They spent the money, and that's why I'm trying to get the facts from the town administrator, to get those facts as to when that money was spent. If it was spent, Mrs. Whiteside, and they discovered that they may have extra money, while we were sitting in those library meetings, then that's a problem for me. If it was before that, and they thought they had the money and spent it, fine. But when we're sitting there trying to figure out who's going to stay and who's going to go, and somebody in that room saw a report that said, hey, we got an extra 330 here. We're going to spend it, but we're not going to mention it. That's a problem, right? I would agree you agree with, to that? Yes, I would agree with that. I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm just asking the Except that I'm not sure that the school committee members have immediate author authority over the expenditures. I think they get budget reports they claim timely and I'm, I'm not here not sure I'm not here accusing anybody of anything so don't turn it that way please. I'm I've asked the town administrator to to look into this and get back to us and tell us what happened. Because there's a lot of people out there who want to know that. Nobody knew that. I didn't know that. We were just here three weeks ago talking about in a joint meeting school committee, finance committee, board of selectmen. That was never brought up. But it was brought up before, sir. Here? We knew about it at the, at the closing of our books. Who knew about it? I think it was brought forward during the school committee meetings. Ah. Not in the town. Yeah, because as such, what they were able to do and why the superintendent mentioned it was they had to reduce some of their revolving funds and such that they'd planned to use in expenditures in this right. fiscal year. So by over the over expenditure actually hurt their spending in this 
fiscal year, so they had to make cuts to make yeah, that money this is, up. This is, I'll say what I said last week again. You know, this is February now. I think last week was still February. Yeah, it's February now. Uh, you know, we made a commitment December 18th. This particular issue happened back in fourth quarter of 13, which is May, June, uh, April, May, June. Um, and it's just not discussed, and it should be. We chastise the police enough uh, if they're 50 cents over and 200 grand over, and, and this is not good management. So I'd like to know uh, if you can get us some more information on this, make the public aware of this, so that uh, I, I think it's important. It's an important question to ask, and it has nothing to do with hey, If it wasn't for uh, Mr. Shaver Hood bringing that up, I know I wouldn't have known about it. So uh, I'm not blaming her. I'm not accusing her. I'm not. I'm very impressed by her, and I'll say it one more time, so that doesn't get flipped around. All right. Thank you. I think she is doing a very good job. You had, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. You had one other point that you wanted to bring. I asked to interrupt you. Yeah, you did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> no, so no, I had the, I had the uh, parking, the gas, yep. the gas station. Yep, and you had one more after the money uh, for the school. No, I was looking at you because I think it had something to do with you. <laughs> no, it's all right. Go ahead. Well, the light bulb goes off in your head. Let us know. I'll let uh, you know. I reserve the right to come back. So noted. Right. Uh, Selectman Slavin. Next item. Uh, votes whether to place proposed articles on the town meeting warrant. Yeah, we don't have them all. Uh, we'll have to come back to this next week. Uh, remember, we set the deadline for submission uh, not only of the ones that the citizens' petitions do under law where we can't move the deadline up, that the statutory deadline was February 14th for those, uh, but we also allowed the town departments more time to come in with articles. We have some. We don't have them all, so there will be some more next week. But I'd like to try to pick off what we have this week, uh, get it done, and get it on the warrant. So with that in mind, uh, why don't we start off with the articles, uh, the request for articles from community preservation. You know, we're voting. Just Simply to put them on the warrant. It's not favorable action. That will come later, probably jointly with FinCom, I think, would be the way to do it like we did last year. But this is simply to put the articles on the warrant so that when we vote to close the warrant, we're closed. Um, I'm not sure I understand what the difference is. I mean, if we're going to vote. We're not voting favorable action. I understand that. We're, what, just, we're just looking at. If we don't agree with the article, would we, is that no. the reason why we're saying no? I think it would be as if the article is written, if there's something wrong with the article, it's flawed or something that you don't want to put on, then we stop that there, yeah, so we're not going to discuss that. So we're not going to sit through some long presentation today. It's going to be, the, if we have any questions. If we have any questions, we'll get And then the night that we're going to talk about favorable action is when we get into the meat and potatoes. Right, exactly, with the FinCom. Because that way we don't bring these people back we're, we're before us a million times. Right okay. Um, Yes, like I'm trying to do that in this I, full swell I, motion. Look, I, I move that we put all eight of the articles contained in this packet right here on the warrant for the annual town meeting. Second. We have a motion from Selectman Tropiano and a second from Selectman Holmes. We do have, uh, we have a question from Selectman Whiteside. Can we just make sure that it is eight? Can we count them? Uh, it says eight. Yeah, but there's... Is and I have one question on that, Mr. Chairman. Yep, go ahead. Do we open it up for discussion, the motion? And, and he's, he's already up because he knows my question. Mr. Through you to the through to, uh, town council, are all of the eight that we're voting on legal, in your opinion? Or if, if, if I could just jump in, if there's any information, if there's something you would suggest to change it, uh, would you suggest we hold off on that one because they do have until the 14th to improve something if it needs to be improved? Well, with your permission, Mr. Chair and members of the board, uh, we're always striving to improve things as we go. <laughs> uh, but of the package of articles that's in front of you, uh, and I believe there are numbers in the upper right-hand side of 
uh, the documents that you have. If you turn to the one that's on, pa on uh, page six, that's the one I wanted to talk about in particular. There are three proposed articles here <laughs> that have to do with using CPC funding uh, for Agawam Village. Uh, Time out, please. Yeah. Like this. Yeah, there's just little. Yeah, I got a bunch of those. Is it? Six is in the corner. It says we have housing authorities. I don't have a six. No, Stoop have a replacement. Staples. The staples are missing. Yeah, but you have a staple. Pack. I don't think so. Yeah, just take. You can just take Derek. <laughs> Take this one, Steve. Oh, thank you. And there yeah, see, the, the staples are gone. Oh, oh, somebody. Yeah, somebody see. stole your staples. Yeah, that was probably Alan. No, well, since I, since I don't have one. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now that we're all on page six. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. There, there are th three articles in here that. Uh, propose the use of CPC funding for Agawam Village. Now, uh, back about a year and a half ago, the law changed as to things that you can do with CPC funding, specifically with respect to affordable housing. And the law became somewhat more liberal than it had been in the past. Um, now, there's a memorandum that the Department of Housing and Community Development put out in May of 2013, which provides the latest guidance on what you can and can't do with respect to CPC funding for uh, proposals such as uh, those that are being offered for these three articles. And clearly, the advisory and, the, and I believe the law say that you can't use uh, CPA money uh, solely for rehabilitation of housing unless CPA money was used to create the housing in the first place. So we have three articles that deal with housing authority property. That property was not created with CPA money. So the question is, what, if anything, can you do with CPA money with respect to Agawam Village? The, uh, the advisory uh, that was sent out draws different distinctions between what can be done and what can't be done um, in a case like this. Uh, we, it, bo it boils down to this. You cannot use uh, community preservation money to re repair or rehabilitate housing that wasn't created with community, preserva community preservation funds in the first place. Uh, however, there is another category under which you can use community preservation, com community preservation money, and that is for, quote unquote, preservation of the structures. Now, um, I had a, an email from Kathleen Colleri uh, at about uh, 7 o'clock this evening. And uh, Ms. Cleary, who is the general counsel for the Division of Local Affairs at DOR, uh, shared, I think, some of my feeling that the law up to this point is ambiguous. There aren't cases that explain it. But she, I think, as I feel, uh, says that we must do the best with what we have. Rule number one is that we don't treat uh, rehabilitation projects as so-called preservation projects. It can't be, you know, a rose by any other name is a rose. It, it, it has to be truly preservation. And that's where we get into this memo from DHCD. DHCD gives specific examples of the sorts of things that could be considered preservation rather than, uh, I'll call it maintenance. Um, they consider preservation activities to be things such as 
work on the building envelope and site work to preserve the structural integrity of the housing. So we're not talking about slapping a coat of paint or cosmetic work, we're talking about structure. It talks about roofing, siding, window replacements to assure that the water tightness of the housing <laughs> is such that the structure won't be impair impaired. It talks about upgrading dangerous electrical or plumbing services uh, because again, dangerous electrical or plumbing services threaten the structure of the building. It talks about replacement of dangerous building systems which threaten the housing units. And it talks about installation of hardwired smoke alarms, sprinklers, and other fire uh, suppression systems. Those are the sorts of things that are considered to be allowable. Examples of things that are nothing but maintenance or cosmetic are replacing kitchen cabinets, putting in energy efficient windows where the windows are otherwise good, it's just, you know, they, they're not as effective as they would be if you had new ones. Uh, improvements needed to comply with ADA or a other federal, state, or local building or access codes. Uh, installation of generators primarily for the comfort and safety of residents and power outages or repairing or repaving parking lots and walkways. So I think when you, you can distinguish between those that are needed to preserve the buildings and those things that are more in the nature of upgrading amenities or cosmetic. Mm -hmm. So with that background, thank you. Uh, I went through the three Agawam articles and one of them I believe is a non-starter. That's six. Exactly. The and that's rest are legitimate. Yes. Six oh. is a non-starter because it's replacing stoops right. and handicap ramps. Uh, you know, unless the stoop is holding up a wall, right. which I very much doubt, but if it were, we could make that case, mm -hmm. but I doubt it. Uh, that would not be a permissible use of CPA uh, funding. Uh, the other issues, uh, the plumbing, uh, there was a, uh, some structural issues with kitchen floors. If the case can be made, uh, that the failure to repair those items uh, endangers the structures, then this is an allowable use of funds. So yeah. there's the bright line test. Uh, so I would say six out. The rest of them, I think you can make a case. Right. And the case will have to be made, right. but you can make a case for them. Mr. Chairman, uh, I think that um, yeah. on the, still in the question, uh, I, I personally uh, think we should scrap all three. There is no way uh, that I would support and will and will encourage people not to support this. This is a state-owned um, development. State should be taking care of their own buildings, and the town should be using this money for town projects. Just as Mr. Trapiano said a couple of weeks ago, we shouldn't put a dime into Tremont Nail. I don't think we should be using CPC money. Uh, if the state is not going to take care of the people and take care of the properties they have, then you know maybe it's a Gene Levanchi call. Uh, but to take this money that could be used on town projects as opposed to state projects, um, you don't have to agree with me, and that's fine. But I, I would amend the motion to remove six, seven, and eight from this. Well, uh, just, just, just one point, and then, uh, Patrick, you're next. Uh, the property is actually, the record title is in the name of the Wareham Housing Authority. Re interestingly enough, the state funds it, but they don't own it. So the Housing Authority stands as the property owner here, not the state. I don't know if that distinction makes any difference to your thinking. Uh, it but does I not, just because the manager is, is a state employee, uh, and that entity is run from the state. When we had uh, Mrs. Uh, Williams Gifford in and Senator Pacheco and HCDC uh, here for the meeting, um, you know, they own it. It's their, it's their property. They run it. They manage it. Uh, in the town of Wareham, uh, if they want to turn it over to us, that's one thing, and then we can take care of our own property. But this is a state entity, uh, regardless of how you try to Use the housing authority. The housing authority is a state appointee and a state manager. A state employee is a manager. Uh, that should tell you enough right there. Yeah. Selectman Tropiano. Okay. Um, 
I'll uh, I'll change my motion to take out six. Um, as far as um, seven is concerned, it talks about asbestos remediation, certainly an emergency <laughs> yeah. issue, certainly relevant to the health and the, the use of the building, and I think it meets the criteria, as you told said. And the other one is uh, underground plumbing, which definitely would be an issue as far as he's concerned. Now, that doesn't mean town meeting has to vote for these. All we're doing is putting them on, right. letting town meeting make that decision. And I don't think that I'm, I should not allow town meeting to make those decisions. I think um, you know, we're sort of all part of a group here, and our job is to let the town try to make decisions that are good for the, good for the town. And that includes giving them all the options. And if you don't put it on, you don't give them all the options. And I want to put it on to give them all the options. So I would say that my motion now would be articles one through eight with the exception of six. How about I'll that? still second my friend's motion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have, we have a, a motion by Selectman Tropiano to... Uh, May I ask for a clarification, sir, because there are other warrant articles in this packet that have to that we have for tonight's meeting. These are all CPC ones. That's so all we're right. talking about. That's okay, so we're, we're, that we're, is the motion would be specifically right. the CPC. Right. Well, the, 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 the one through eight that have been submitted. This one through eight in the CPC. Subtract group. number six. We're not talking about any mm -hmm. of the others at this point. Thank you. Okay. So, Selectman uh, Flavin. Mr. Bowen, on uh, on number seven. It says asbestos remediation. That is for the resident, not for the structure. Is it not? The flooring would be for the structure. I would argue that you can't render the premises habitable if you've got friable asbestos Absolutely. in there. So you're, you're talking about the, the, the simple um, merits of the structure. This isn't a matter of a sink that isn't in great shape or cabinets that maybe some of the varnish is peeled off of. This is fundamental to people living in the building. I'm just asking for a legal opinion on the wording. Uh, with your permission, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think it's a close call, uh, and I won't joke about that. Uh, the work, you know, it would be useful to know the particular work that's going to be involved. Uh, are we talking about a situation where we are simply removing, and, and it's not a simple job, uh, removing basic asbestos tiles, uh, or as is often the case, once you start removing the upper surface and you get into the subsurface and you that. find it's all rotted out, you find that you, know, you could have someone ready to fall through the floor of the kitchen. Now, I have been told, uh, I believe it was last week or the week before, that there are some structural issues with respect to the uh, kitchens in particular, if, if I remember that correctly. I, I would suggest that simply peeling uh, the, the, the types of uh, materials that would be used to affix these tiles, it would be extremely difficult for anyone uh, who actually intended to get the job done in less than a year to pry the tiles up without so substantially yeah, damaging the subfloor that it would have to be replaced. Expensive uh, you know, I say it's a close call, well, uh, it is, but I come down on the side. Point of, of order. Folks, Point folks, of folks, order. folks. Let's let let's let the council conform us here. You know, I, I come down on the 51% side that this is allowable. I mean, obviously, the more engine, I'm sure people at town meeting will want to hear a bit more background about the extent of the work that's going to be done. Uh, that's important. Uh, but on the assumption that there is going to be some structural work, and this is just not merely a cosmetic effort, uh, I think this is permissible. Selectman Slavin. I would ask that town council work with the CPC to make sure the language that comes forth in the motion, in the motion et cetera, will cover us to the 51%, because I hate to see all the effort go in here, and then the AG's office come back and kick it back because our language is wrong. Thank you. And, and with, as a follow-up, Mr. Chairman, I think that the explanations, and I realize that you're only voting to put the articles on today, but I think that the explanations should be very carefully worked with to make sure that they comport with the uh, directives from DHCD. Thank you. Uh, 
the other thing to consider here is where it, it appears we're not going to have unanimity here uh, in, in, in the, what I assume is that uh, Selectman Holmes, well, I'm not going to assume anything, he's come right out and said that he doesn't much think, he doesn't think seven and eight really belong on here. Uh, would it be better to just vote these individually so he has a chance to support other articles should he so desire? No, he just seconded, he seconded he just the, just motion. Second the motion. You're okay with it? Please don't. Yeah. I can vote for myself, Mr. Chairman. Well, I'm trying to give you an opportunity to do so well, in accordance with each motion, with each motion here, each, each article. Motion so. made and seconded. I did have a quick question on this, though. If it's, if it's, I mean, again, I, this is draft. I know, and I've been reading through those documents, and thank you for sending those out all week. I've been reading through those. Uh, but if it's, if it's unlawful or terminology is for renting space to somebody with asbestos in it, well, what is the state doing renting these apartments out with asbestos in it? And how is $35,000, I guess this question would go to the committee, um, is this is this $35,000 supposed to pay for all of the remediation? No, it's a portion of it. I, I have the application for your review. I, I did not make copies of all the applications. No, no, folks, no, don't I, do that. That's just, it's I, I do question. have it here for you. That's okay. What Tonight. is the total cost of this, do you know? It was somewhere around 300 some thousand. I, I, excuse I, me. The, the, thank you. 350? This, this one was the state has granted 322,000 to rehabilitate building two. This request for the uh, asbestos mediation was just for buildings one and two. So it is not the full complex, and the cost was thirty-five thousand dollars. It was three hundred and fifty for building two. No. Is that what you just said? The t the state just three twenty-two to rehabilitate building two right. for the tune of roof, doors, windows, sli siding, stoops, handicapped accessibility, and plumbing upgrades, and the roof for building one. This is an incremental request by Agawam to do the um, kitchen floors for build the apartments in buildings one and two only. Yeah, so that's that's because they must have asbestos tiles in them. They do. Yeah. Well, guess. they do have us, but how many of us live in older buildings that still have asbestos tile because of when it was built and that's what we're looking at is replacing what's there when we're rehabilitating the building building one was done a year ago building two is being done now this is just incremental work to be done on that site so building one was done a year ago they didn't year and a half they didn't remove it at that time i don't know you'd have to ask them it wasn't part of our cpa funding we only helped with the doors for that project we weren't given the detail of that project. Oh, so you would think this would have been removed during that time? I would have to speak to the people who were in charge of them at that time. Who is the state? That no, Ago, the uh, housing authority. It's just part of the state. It's a state employee there. It's a state appointed. Well, she's program. no longer around to ask. Well, the governor is appointing people to that uh, authority, uh, regardless of what this board says or local government. This is Steve, the state Mike. Mike Martin. I'm young. sorry. It's a state entity, once again. Why didn't they replace this floor when they had it all apart last year, a year and a half ago? Yeah, I just, um, but, the, you know, I agree with Pete. If somebody's telling me that this is legal, first of all, I, Rich, at 51 points, I'm not too, too confident in that. And was number eight 51 points, too, or are you a little higher on that? Well, no, it's good because you know what? You're the guy who's going to get That's up and tell plumbing. people whether this is legal or not. That's the plumbing is number eight. So if you're only at 51 and you're unsure, that's probably not good for you. Or the moderator will have to deal with you. Oh, well. And you got to make sure you have a better answer than 51 points or you might get a spanking. Well, it might make for an interesting meeting, I guess. But, yeah. uh, well, but Ms. with, your, with uh, your permission, Mr. Chairman, all I can do on each one of these is cite the legal standards that would apply as to whether or not these are legal. At town meeting, someone is going to have to get up, and it won't be me, uh, to say, here's exactly what we're doing. It's structural. 
it falls within one of the categories under uh, DHCD's advisory. Yeah, I mean, you're almost going to need our, an architect or an engineer or a project manager to get up and give that kind of information. Now, what I've told you is, is that one of these, I can tell right off the bat, right. doesn't, doesn't pass. Uh, and, I don't, and I don't need an engineer to tell me that one. Right, but the second person that gets up is going to say, Madam Moderator, through you to town council. And then you're going to have to answer the question. Sure. And so, in, in a way, what I'm going to say is, Madam Moderator, I will be happy to answer this question, but I need to hear some evidence from the proponent as to exactly what the work is that's being done and whether it is structural and preservative in nature. By and, the time you breathe that answer out, the vote is no. Is there a question or there's further discussion? Or, right. Because okay. I can't offer an opinion without the evidence. I thank you, I thank you for your, doing your homework because I know I asked you last week to have that answer prepared for this week. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, we have a motion before us. Are we all set? Yeah. Discussion here? We have a motion before us made by Selectman Tropiano, seconded by Selectman Holmes. Anything else? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? One through five and seven and eight are on the warrant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your thank you for your work. Thank you for bearing with us. I I want to apologize to all of you for the um, wave of emails. I know. No. <laughs> I cannot there has been a wave of emails. Yeah. Um, the other thing that makes me nervous is you put that exclamation point on all of them. I know. And it's like, okay, what is I important? I know. Yeah. I apologize. I, I know the okay. ladies in the office, roses. I like the way you put in the subject. Disregard the previous. That way it's easier to hit the delete I'm button. I'm sorry. Yep. I apologize to all of you. Well, that's okay. The ladies in the office. It's okay. That's okay. That you works. just killed bits, Thank not you for trees, your so don't, we're happy about that. Please don't uh, take any commentary as anything Unless against you, you or the committee. It's just questions and issues, right? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Next up in the packets, we have, what, the TDR? No, we're still on the... Uh, the articles, huh? well, yes. well, this but is the, the transfer of the development, development rights articles. Yeah, I don't know what the hell happened to my package. This is just the uh, bringing the TDR back from last fall to the Springtown meeting. The well, we put the TDR on. Second. Thank you. Yeah. Comment. Yes. It has been extensively renovated, revised, boiled down, and made into understandable language. And I appreciate that, Mr. Slavin, and the work that's gone into it. I think we should uh, basically thank Mr. Rowley, Mr. Pichette from the uh, Conservation, uh, Mr. Iafredi from Building Inspections. Uh, let's see who else we got in the list. Uh, John Witten, who's our land court attorney. We should also thank Ken Farrar for taking time during difficult time for him to work on this as well, and myself and Mr. Teitelbaum as well. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, that we have a second? You have a second. Yeah, I think we have the motion before us. I just wanted to add one comment. Uh, you know, in producing this Thank document, uh, Selectman Slavin essentially filled uh, the void we have at Town Planner. Uh, this is typically work that a Town Planner would be doing since we don't have one. Uh, we've got Alan, so I, I, I appreciate that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, 500. That one's on the warrant. That was a tedious. Next up. <laughs> Next up, uh, we've got Selectman Slavin's, looks like a request for a charter change. Uh, this is a one page, just so everybody can find it. And this is just, we, we agreed last week we were not going to bother to attempt to change the election date or the actual start of the business portion of town meeting. So that stays at the 1st and the 28th. What this does is f going forward for next year, uh, again, the first Tuesday in the month of April is the beginning of town meeting, so everything starts from that date and goes back for the different requirements. What we've done is we're suggesting that we make a change with a, a by charter, the town administrator in section 5.3 of the charter says that he has to submit his budget by December 15th. It 
says for the school committee in 5.2, they're supposed to submit their budget in sufficient time for the town administrator to do his budget as as Section 5.3 requires. Motion to put the article on the warrant. Second. Second. I just want to explain what it is. Sorry, that's all. <laughs> Thank you. Bottom line is we're going to change the date. We're going to try to change the date to January 25th for the town administrator. And 20 days before that, the school committee will have to submit their the budget. Week. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So you're ready for more of these? You I need to vote it. No, we got to vote yeah. that oh, one. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Five zero zero. Whose motion right. was it anyway? So like, we have. Uh, Selectman Tropiano, who seconded? Selectman Whiteside. I need to get that out for yeah, the yeah. Uh, office yeah, no, no, transcript. That's good. that's good. They like I, that. Uh, I move uh, that we put Articles 1, Article 2, and Article 4 included in the packet. One is housekeeping set asides, yeah. Bryant Farm Tremont Nail. And uh, Onset Bathhouse um, Energy Survey. Second. Engineering Survey. We did those. Put yeah. those on the warrant. No, we haven't done those. And those, are CPA. those are in the CPI. Those account. are in the CPI. Oh, are they we in the CPI? Yeah. Second? I am sorry. Those are they already gave done. Me separate sheets on them. Sorry. Yeah, well, what did you do right. to these packets down here? <laughs> you look at them laughing. Yeah, this packet's he a mess. He went through these before the meeting. They changed this them is <laughs> he, I got eight number ones and five number fours. Jeez. <laughs> Let's and, and now you know why I pick mine up in the office. Let's uh, just say that uh, it was interesting up in the office today. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, Selectman Whiteside? I'll make a motion. Okay. Go to on. do go what? Ahead. To um, <laughs> add she has, the... She had her packets all together. No, I did. <laughs> <laughs> you drive me nuts tonight. Um, no. The Put the petition to... Uh, place Cranberry Lane as accepted as a town way. Second. Second. Just for information, we're still waiting for, unfortunately, for a couple documents. There is a chance that article might get pulled. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. It's a placeholder. Just so everybody knows. Motion made by Selectman Whiteside, seconded by Selectman Holmes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed to Hussein, 500. Move Cranberry that Lane will go on the, the warrant. The um, petition for Lynn Road be uh, for acceptance as a townway be placed on the warrant. Second. Motion made by Selectman Whiteside, seconded by Selectman Tropiano, I Selectman just, Slavin. I just had a senior moment. This is the one that, that we're still waiting on stuff. Cranberry Lane is okay. Sorry. All right. There's two of them. Okay. Keep it straight. We have place. I'm trying, but I'm old. Okay. All set. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed to saying 500. I move that the article submitted by the um, Harbor Master, dated January 21st, to raise and appropriate or transfer $78,546 from the Harbor Service Permit reserved for appropriations account to the general fund operating budget to defray Second. the cost. Okay, motion made by Selectman Whiteside, seconded by Selectman Holmes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, 500. And I will also recommend that we put the other article from the Harbor Master on, which starts to see if the town will vote pursuant to Chapter 44, Section 53E and half. Second. Second. Got that one. You beat me. Motion made by Selectman Whiteside, seconded by Selectman Holmes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed to saying 500. Okay. I still have three more. Hmm. You have more? Well, you have two for the special. Transfer development. Uh, you have two for a special. Derek, the specials aren't ready to go yet, correct? Uh, no, we're not yeah, no, we wouldn't yet. discuss anything on the special. Tonight. Yeah, the specials, if uh, I don't even know why they're in here, but they were provided to us nonetheless. Excellent. How about this one, uh, the, uh, the amendment to Division 8 by adding Article 4? Right. Does anybody this see that by one? Mr. Mulker, and this, this is a citizen petition. petition. This is citizen That's a petition, so that goes on by operational law. It goes on by law, so... Yeah. No we don't have to vote on that. Okay. It's on. How about the... Order, yes. The CPT articles will play, go on the, uh, art, uh, the spring town meeting. Yes. Some of those must go on a special town meeting because of the timing and nature for the expenditures. What are the numbers? I, I have uh, well, come up and use the microphones, please, so it gets picked up so the office can hear it. Two for the regular town meeting. Six is six is gone already. So we right, just yeah. just give us the numbers for for okay. uh, regular town meeting first, please. Okay, for for regular town meeting, is the onset bathhouse. Numbers. What numbers? numbers. The, oh, I got it. 
Okay. One, two, and the onset bathhouse. Uh, <laughs> onset bathhouse is four. So regular yes. town meeting is one, two, and four. One, two, and four. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yes. And so um, the other regular three, town meeting. Three, five, seven. Wait, wait, wait. She's got another one. The eight. other regular town meeting is the bond payment, and that was number two. Right. That's regular yeah. town meeting. And uh, it, it tells in the top line. Right. And regular town meeting is also number one, the housekeeping set right. aside. And the other one is three, five, seven, so and eight. So it's, yeah. Yes. So it's one, two, and four for the regular. Yes. Three, yeah, five, seven, 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 and eight and for the eight special. For the special. I make that motion. Second. Okay, we have a motion from Selectman Whiteside, seconded by Selectman Holmes. The motion is for articles one, two, and four. Thank you very much, by the way. To Thank go you. on the regular warrant, three, five, seven, and eight to go on the special warrant. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. Thank five you. Zero zero. Thank you. you. You have them on the subject line in the warrant article in the yes, top. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Thank missed. you. Thank you for uh, bringing that to our attention and yeah. having us get it right. Um, we got one here about a dog. Yeah, that's the one I'm going to do. Yeah. I move that we put on the Animal Control Division 8, Article 2, Section 3, Beach Marsh Article. Second. Your hands. Uh, motion made by Selectman Tropiano, seconded by Selectman Holmes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. Now there's another one. Yep. Five zero uh, zero. There's a, th is this one uh, Beach Marsh and public buildings? Okay, it's in the same thing. Okay. Okay, what else we got? That's it? Apparently you were bragging the other day about bringing your dog into the Don't building. Stand. Don't stand. And look what you did. Now they're going to outlaw dogs in the building. Eventually, nice work. eventually. Nice work. Nice work. Actually, Mr. Just dogs are people too, you know. Mr. Yeah. Sullivan yeah. actually yeah. posted the buildings this morning. All public buildings are not to be used by yeah. dogs, cats, and other animals. Thank Earlier you. this week. Just enhancing my reputation as a dog With lawyer the here. You the the dog animal. Except for service right. animals. Right. Right. If you hadn't said nothing, that wouldn't happen. Well. All right, so that's it, right? All set? All set for this week. Okay. I believe it was a pit bull coming in that was the final straw. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, the chairman has a big dog. The so. chairman is not a pit bull. I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe uh, I need to be, but. <laughs> only if he's a Republican. <laughs> okay. Now that we're done with that, next item, please. All right. Uh, moving on. Sorry, we're up to number. Oh, I'll business? start it out. Any other town business not reasonably anticipated 40 hours, hours prior to the posting of the meeting? Selectman Whiteside, you got any 48-hour business? No. Nope. Selectman Tropiano? No. Selectman Holmes? No. Nope. Selectman Slavin? No. Nope. I don't have anything. Next item, please. Okay. <laughs> Next item is the town administrator's report. I think this is going to be his third uh, sally at this one. With at the report today? <laughs> yeah, you've been reporting a lot. <laughs> the uh, I'd like the first item I'd like to bring forward is thanking Chief McDuffie, uh, Captain Dykus of the Wareham Fire Department. Um, since we've been trying to figure out with Tremont Nail how we go about um, solving this issue of the sprinkler system without costing the town a fortune, they've been working diligently putting plans together, meeting with the Municipal Maintenance Department, and I'm happy to announce that we have received a permit to turn off that sprinkler system, and it will not cost us any other monies. We will still have our alarms in there, which will make sure that if there is a fire, the Wareham Fire Department will be notified. We will still have the ability that uh, if there is a fire from the outside of the building, they can turn on the, uh, the sprinkler system to, uh, to open that right up to turn to help with fire suppression. And uh, this was a great collaborative effort to save the town a lot of money. And I appreciate their help in getting it done. Uh, I'd also like to mention that uh, Selectman Slavin served as uh, sort of an unofficial ambassador between the town uh, to the fire district to help this make this happen yeah. as well. There you go. Anything else? 
Well, this is uh, the next item is I met with the superintendent today as well as their business manager. And uh, I'm happy to say they have given me their information as to how they will reduce the 250000 It will involve the, uh, the freezing of planned purchases as well as reduction of a total of seven staff members. So while that's not happy news for, it is good news that we've been able to fulfill the five hundred thousand dollar goal. Thank you very yeah, much. Let's let's make for sure working with that. Yeah. I, just I think like the measuring stick for that one happens on July one. Yeah. So let's let's not jump the gun here in case there's some unforeseen event that causes us to go astray. But it's good to hear that no, you know, four and a half months out from the deadline that we've we've at least gotten there. I'd just like to make one comment, if possible, that I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Hood on, Mrs. Hood on this particular piece because uh, the, she and Michael really have done a lot of work to get the accounting, the numbers down, and have gone through everything so they understand every dollar that's going in and out of that school department as Mr. Sullivan is working on his side. I think we finally are starting to get numbers we can all have some faith in, and I thank her for that. I would second that comment. Um, it's really just an incredible um, move forward. There's also a lot of willingness to work within the town's budget, and I think that everyone should be complimented on that and their willingness to come to the table and come up with their portion. Yeah, there's, I, I think uh, everything's been said. I, I'm highly complimentary and I appreciate their working with us all as a as a town body um, the next item i'm bringing forward is we have awarded the contracts for the triannual revaluation vision was the high bidder the total cost for those contracts were a hundred low bidder right oh, excuse mm -hmm. me the low bidder <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say i like vision too but not so much if they have the anything, high bidder. anything over zero is too much for me nowadays <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, we're the low bidders excuse me and as part of that um we, if we were able to pay for both the residential and commercial up front, it's a total savings of approximately $16,000, which uh, we will be able to do. I'm going in from the finance committee tomorrow to request an additional 22000 out of the reserve to make that happen, as well as uh, fund the permits as part of the triannual reval. So, yeah. So that's, uh, and we're also coming up, believe it on not, or not, on our, uh, on the 10 year project that we must do is within a few years. So we will, um, we're going to need to put some funds together for that. And uh, I will, as we move forward with the plan, I'll provide the board with it. So I appreciate the help of, uh, of the finance director and the director of assessing on getting this accomplished. Okay. Uh, this is Whiteside. Any reports from committees? I didn't talk, I didn't talk to One thing that we forgot to say earlier is that the um, library fundraiser, dollar fundraiser, Fri Friday, Saturday. Fridays and Saturday. There's been a lot of confusion about when it was. Um, and so Friday night, or from 18th to 20th. I thought it was Saturday night. Friday and Saturday. Friday and Saturday? It's not Saturday and Sunday? No. I don't think so. They had a mistake on the dates. They had the 15th and 16th. Oh, okay. They had Saturday Sunday for the dates. But Got it. But it's, re it's really Friday and Saturday? But the flyer said Friday, Saturday. Yes. It was really Friday and Saturday. They had the English one and the Saturday. Everything. The main event yeah, is, the main, it, the so main event is Saturday. Yeah. They opened up for oh. Friday night for adults as well. That's that permit thing that we signed last week, remember? The liquor was for Friday so night. So it is Friday night. Friday night and Saturday. Okay, so Valentine's night and the next day. Nothing on Sunday. No, because the library's closed that day as well. Okay.
shut it off for obvious reasons. Um, can we host the, the <laughs> workshop for the... I'm trying. Um, it, <laughs> sponsor a Saturday workshop for the um, commissions that might fall under the natural resources. Um, I think that would be the best way of getting that started. We talked about it last week. I don't know if we set a date, but could we please set a date? Okay. Probably looking at some time in March. We've got a couple of other things well, to do this yes, month. Well, yes, but I th I'd like to. I'm, I, I'm sort of becoming homesy in here. I'd like a date. I just did, uh, yes, I'm doing a home. What would what would what do you think would work best for that? Dur another night during the week or? No, I said a Saturday. You want a Saturday? Do you want a Saturday morning? Ten o'clock. Yes, please. Most people are out of bed by then. And How that about would, the? That would be the natural resources boards and commissions, but I don't see why we're limiting it to just them. I mean, because most boards and commissions in this town right now have issues with um, quorums and members, so not enough. Yes. Yeah. That, that would be fine. The natural resources, then. How about 10 o'clock on the 22nd? We'll need to do it. If we're going to do a workshop, we're going to need to do it in the uh, cafeteria, I think. So, okay, we'll schedule it. Why are you shaking your head? Yeah, I don't see why we can't use this. All right. Do it here then. Mr. That Tropiano. Works. Okay, uh, two things for me. Uh, the first thing is um, I now have some space, and I'm planning on the Master Plan Committee meeting next week uh, as soon as I can get a date that everybody can be there. So at some point, we'll meet next week with the Master Plan Committee and get that started. Uh, the other. The other thing I wanted to say is I, I saw something interesting I just wanted to uh, mention, and I should have mentioned this earlier, but I was reading um, something uh, in, uh, I mean, actually it was online, you know, reading some online news, and I noticed that the states were balking at some, guess what, unfunded mandates from the federal government when it yeah. came to education. Yeah. Yeah, they're paying. They, yeah, they, they, I can't believe this. Can you believe this? They're paying like, you know, some of the states are paying as much as, you know, uh, $900 million for this education reform program that they put in place. And it's not um, nobody left behind. It's something new, you know, that came along after Obama got in. And uh, apparently the states are all saying, no, we're not going to do it anymore. We're not going to pay that money because it's an unfunded mandate. Imagine this. Imagine the states. And in Massachusetts, I can think of in particular, who use the unfunded mandate, what, every day on a regular basis to sh cost shift to the cities and towns complaining about an unfunded mandate? you got to be kidding me. Talk about an irony, huh? I mean, here they put this stuff on us all the time, and they've got a lot of guts to complain. That's all I can say. I just wanted to point that out. Anyway, that's all I need for today. Thanks. Mr. Holmes? You know, he, you know that was a good article. I read that article, uh, and it, it's no different than the conversation we just had I 30 know. minutes ago about state housing, uh, and they refused to come up with the money, so they push it onto the poor CPA funds and the towns to take care of the elderly. And then when we say no, we're not going to put money into a state project, you know, the elderly people get mad at you. It's like you know. To no win. Why bother? Right? But now I agree with that. And you know what's going to happen as we move forward? Mr. Sullivan's going to just say, hey, you know, it might be a state-funded mandate, but we don't have the money. We're not doing it. That's basically what these states are saying. They, they, are, abs so, they are absolutely saying that. That's and right. And they are not going to pay it. I mean, they're, they're falling in line, and I think they're all going to jump on the bandwagon together. See, that's one of the things they can do is they unify. And for some reason or another, we can't unify 351 cities and towns. Otherwise, we can yeah. tell the state where to go, too. See, the only thing we want to know is, 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 is Mr. Bowen 
He's going to have to represent us in all those things, whether well, that's included yeah, in the 15000 But don't say that I until we... I think it is, right? Because that's not a town council-funded mandate, is it? <laughs> <laughs> those those questions are best right, best answered. Those that's questions, cool. yeah. Okay, it's all serious now. I did read that article Patrick's talking about, um, and it really is coming to that point where Thank people you. are beginning to refuse to pay for some of these things, and we're we're going to be no different when it comes to the state. Up uh, microphone. I was talking to Alan. It's. The, the unfunded mandate is interesting because today, downstairs in the building department, we had a state inspector come in, and he was sitting there just letting us know ahead of time the state is in the process of putting in a lot more uh, regulations, uh, which are basically more unfunded mandates that we're going to have to comply with, but of course, they don't pay us for it. So um, we're going to get to a point, hopefully, where we say we've had enough, we're not going to do this anymore, and you know what you can do with it all. And hopefully that will happen someday. Play with the cowbell. Thank you. Mrs. Whiteside is laughing now. <laughs> now, to get back to what we need to do. Yeah, let's. Pay, payback is good. Uh, for information, the uh, Onset Fire and Water District did meet last uh, Wednesday, and they voted to participate in the uh, project that we have working with the town and the two districts on looking for things to basically come up with where they can have some synergies, et cetera. So that was a, a good thing because I wasn't sure that was going to happen or not. Uh, 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 Mr. Sullivan would be in charge. I only was there temporarily to, to get it going. The, the the they haven't put it together yet. Oh. Uh, just so you know, the, the members are Marcin from uh, the Prudential Committee at Onset, uh, Brenda Ekstrom from the Water Commission is at Onset, uh, George Barrett from the Prudential Committee uh, from Wareham, uh, Jay Tamagini, uh, Water Commissioner from Wareham, and of course Mr. Sullivan. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, through his designee, which was me, I guess, uh, was able to procure two interns, uh, one working upstairs. Uh, actually, is, he's about to become a graduate student uh, for Bridgewater State University. He's a geography major, and geography majors uh, basically do a lot of study with the GIS program at Bridgewater State, which is one of the better programs in the country, especially since they just spent about $100 million on a new science and mathematics uh, building in the facility. Uh, so we're very fortunate to get a student trained in the latest equipment to help us get our GIS system up and running and current for the state so we can get all our maps and everything in order. We also have a young lady who's a graduate student from the University of Mass Dartmouth who is uh, working on the, the issue of, um, I think, electrical usage, et cetera, to, so we have some idea of what we really use when we try to figure out our SRX credits, et cetera. Uh, and the best news of all is both interns are at no cost to the town. And on the issue of the uh, onset, uh, actually not the onset, the Wareham Village uh, Oyster Festival, uh, it's interesting that we've been working very quietly uh, with the state and federal government, the agricultural department, on developing the promotion of uh, Wareham oysters. Unfortunately, the state official has been out sick for a month and a half. We hope to have them in, the, in here shortly to actually talk about it. And my end goal from, from what I'm looking at is probably won't happen this year, but hopefully next year, Wareham might have its own oyster festival to kind of uh, supplement the scallop festival, which has left the area. So I'm hoping this will actually come to fruition. And what else have we got that was Is interesting? Is there an oyster eating contest? We'll have an oyster eating contest. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Sullivan has a head start on that, though. Straight to the food. <laughs> <laughs> no designation uh, for that one. I'll <laughs> go. Me too. And as I said before, that the, uh, the members of uh, actually the... Uh, well, Walmart is going, the, the, the piece of property in front on Cranberry Highway, going around the corner of Toby Road, there is an actual site plan now for development there. And that's it. Okay. I don't have anything. Uh, I sort of jumped the gun on the meeting with the library commissioners by doing that under the announcements, uh, but I don't have anything else. Second. Motion to adjourn by Selectman Holmes, seconded by Selectman Slavin. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain. 500. Ring the bell. Good night.